Hey guys, thanks for coming tonight. Uh, I have a very special uh, stream planned. Uh, it's not, it's not so much a, uh, a stream. It's, you know, it's one of those streams where it's more like a podcast. Um, but I do have a small video element tonight. Um, welcome, guys, to my my podcast studio. Uh, you can see it's it's uh, pretty pretty heckin' rad. Uh, you may recognize it as the, the pre previously it was the Blathers room, but um, and then we spent a whole night renovating it together, and and all that work that we did was just absolutely for for nothing because I ripped all of it out to make the podcast room. But don't worry, I remember what it was like. I'm go I'm gonna put it back eventually. But tonight we're using the room to do a podcast. Just waiting on um, our guest should be here any minute. Um, supposed to be here, actually. Does any anybody... Has anybody seen the guests? Oh, hey, sorry there. Sorry I'm late. How oh, you doing? finally got here. It took you your sweet time. I got I put some tea out for you because I know you, yeah, you I like saw. you like tea. Um, you could go ahead and just pour yourself a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually adorable. You did an amazing job with this room. Y you like it? Yeah, it's, you nailed it. I love the the water cooler and the what. This is this is amazing. I look like I, I I look like I'm ready to become big enough to destabilize a small country <laughs> with my podcasts with this with the power of this room. I figured that the walls they kind of looked like soundproofing, but but not really. I used the the uh, yeah. I put the tea out for you, coffee out for me. I got all the the the, the fucking the mixer things back there, whatever the fuck they are. I got. I don't know, I think it's pretty cool. Um, it's, it's excellent. I'm pretty proud of it. I'm happy with this. So it took me like... I, I love the art the art on the wall, too. <laughs> the, the signatures. Yeah, those are from uh, previous guests. Um, speaking of guests, guys, we have a very special one tonight. Um, maybe some of you aren't familiar with with, uh, with Frank... Uh, what was it? Fra Frank Clothed Daughter. Frank, um, Frank, please introduce yourself to the to the, the, uh, the listeners. Frank. Hi, hi there. I make... Um... Up the badger nest. <laughs> the bad, up the badger nest. Damn, that sounds uh, inappropriate. Uh, Frank is here, and Frank, of course, is actually Fred Knudsen uh, from down the rabbit hole, and he's got a little rabbit hole he wants to take me down tonight. Uh, Frank, God damn it, Fred. Do, 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 do <laughs> how, you hold on, hold on? If you're reflexively calling me Frank, yeah. how often have you called me Frank on stream? I've, I've not been calling you Fred for fucking weeks. Like, I've actually hold, just... Hold on, just, hold just, on. I... Yeah. I got... What, why are you calling me this? He's <laughs> using the reactions! Uh, you know, man, it just, it just stuck. I don't know. It's now at that point where you start saying something ironically, and now, you know, um, you, you just... Reflexively, the ironic thing becomes reality. So now I've just been calling you Frank. Like I just been fucking. I'm sorry, guys. His no, name's no, not it's Frank. Okay, it's okay. Let's put it down. Let's put it down there. His name is not Frank. It never was Frank. It's it's it's, it's Frand Frandrick Fre Fred <laughs> Frederick Frederick dudes. Okay, I fixed it. I fixed it. His name's you Fred Frank. You know him. You love him. Also, uh, I want to say thank you to the person who resubbed earlier. I'm going to be missing resubs tonight, guys, because, again, me and, me and Fred, Fred are going to be talking about We're things. It's a conversation, so, you know, I'm not going to interrupt him and talk over him and things like that. So I'm probably going to just, um, again, I maybe got to set up that Moobot thing to figure out how to save the names of people who resub to the end of the stream so I could thank everybody at the end of the stream. But uh, yeah, I'm not gonna be calling out subs today, just so you know in advance, so you don't you don't get butt hurt. But also, let's say thank you to Fred for coming to uh, hang out. What are you uh, What are you cursing us with tonight? Tonight, I am cursing you with an old, ancient piece of. I'm actually not entirely sure when it happened, but this is old. This is an old piece of internet lore. It is the story of the greatest tabletop RPG troll character of all time, to the point that. The, the A scale of plot derailment was named after him. It's called the Henderson scale, uh, done on a scale of 0 
which is the plot is carrying along as intended, to um, one full Henderson, which is complete plot derailment. So you're talking about a situation where, you know, it said this took place in, in Dungeons and Dragons, right? This is a, a, uh, this... a, a recounting of a Dungeons and Dragons event um, campaign. It, it was done in a different thing it's actually based um the system is called trail of cthulhu uh oh. it's uh basically the players are hunting down cults and trying to stop elder gods from coming into our world like that's the whole idea is you know that it, it's very um dunwich horror e in that you know it's a group it's a ragtag group of misfits all trying to stop the return of an elder god it's a game, a tabletop game, very similar to D and D in that it's like an uh, role playing type of a thing with dice rolling yes. and shit like that. D and D with a different, with different numbers, basically. Okay. And a different setup. And this is an official game setup. that has there's books you can buy and all that shit. It's a, yep. it's a thing. Okay. I didn't yep. know that. I never heard of this before. I thought this old man Anderson thing took place in D and D, but it doesn't. It takes place in Trail of Cthulhu. You're calling it. Right. Okay. So just. D and D with a with a yeah a uh, Lovecraftian horror flavor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So it's it's fantastic. So the thing that we're going to be looking at tonight was a a just recounting of of events, more or less that took yes. place during a campaign of this game. Correct. Uh, in fact, uh, first before we get started, I'm going to give a description. So the the player. Uh, was on, I believe, for a 4chan board. This, this was where it was sh uh, shared, the tabletop gaming board, TG. Uh, he went by the name Waffle House Millionaire. And the way, that he, the way that he introduced this character was, who wants to hear the tale of Old Man Henderson, the character who won Call of Cthulhu? Won Call of Cthulhu. Which is yes. like a thing that, like, like, that's like a thing you can't do, really, is what you're saying. Right, like you, a, you don't really win it, but he won. Right, it's like beating Animal Crossing. It's like, okay, you don't, right. do, you don't, you don't do that. So, Waffle Stomp uh, Princess was his name. And he said, he said, we're gonna, we're gonna tell, who wants to hear the story of Old Man Henderson? On a forum yes. for tabletop games. Okay. Yep. Now, he tells a couple of different stories of old man henderson but i'm only uh as for his account i'm only going to give his description of how he happened in the first place and what he looked like um and then after that another member of the party comes in like he starts writing on the board and recounting everything and waffle house millionaire says yep like, this is how it all happened and this other person is much more verbose and so so who... We're going to be reading his account for the most part, but I want Waffle House Millionaire to introduce the character. So, Wa Waffle House Millionaire confirmed that the other person was was there and was and was part of this. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, all right. Now, whose character is it? Is it either of their characters? This is Waffle House Millionaire's character. It is Waffle House Millionaire's WHM. character. WHM. Okay. Yeah, WHM um... is the person who made this character. Now, there was a dungeon master or whatever, DM. They probably don't call it that in Trail of Cthulhu. Um, G, uh, the, the generic term is GM. G GM. I said DM like, like a penis. GM, game it's master. The one, like, okay. e even people who use other systems call it a DM anyway. It's they do. Okay. They do. I'm not, like, totally wrong. Yeah. I just didn't. Okay. All right. So the, the catch well, the is reason, GM. The reason, the, the reason for this is uh, DM is a copywritten term. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the, the GM... Is his uh is his side of this story told anywhere online? No. It's not. Okay. He's just like we only know him through the lens of the players. He was a complete cockbag. Oh, he was a oh, right, right. So, I think it sounds like part of the the dichotomy here was you had a GM who was being kind of not very good at it and also being a, a general all-around douche. We get you get to know precisely how. Okay. Very soon. Don't worry. And, and and antagonizing him, we have this player character, this player, Old Man Henderson. Yes. All right. It sounds like uh, it sounds like a setup for a good time. Yeah. Let let me read the initial description of Old Man Henderson by the player for you. Okay. And now I'd like to point out there are a couple of uh, colorful terms. It is 4chan. Uh, it never gets really really bad. 
No, like, bad racial slurs. Just skip over anything that you th that you think is probably going to fucking piss somebody off slash upset somebody. Mm -hmm. it it's very mild, especially for the time. All right. I'm not worried, is okay. my point. Okay. All right, then. I'd like to start by saying that the GM was a bastard that had it coming. Bullshit tactics to make every everyone go crazy like a D6 with only five sides. No story. No reason. Lose 10 sanity. The others continued to allow this. We were playing a modern day setting, with the other players being a college professor who found a couple of stray pages of a copy of the Necronomicon and wanted to find out just what the hell it was. A detective who was investigating a missing persons case connected to the local cult and a local athlete, I think it was football, trying to find out why some of his friends seemed so distant lately. And then, there was Old Man Henderson who was never given a first name. Old Man Henderson was always a little crazy and blamed his life's misfortunes on Vietnam. He never went to Vietnam. He was 12 in 74. Uh, and I would be fucking amazed if anyone gets this reference. Not everyone does. It is the song My Brother-in-Law by Tim Wilson, as far as I can tell. Old Man Henderson wore combat boots, cargo shorts, and an open-front Hawaiian shirt with a wife beater underneath. Oh, do you want to show the image that I sent to you there is a picture of the character uh done by uh somebody who read this i guess uh let me just grab it real quick i had it uh available i still have it available yes open that link okay um and then okay it's a jpeg wow crisis averted all right so there's <laughs> thought it was gonna be j fifth that's Old Man Henderson. Uh, there you go. As described, uh, his cargo shorts, open Hawaiian shirt with the wife beater underneath. Um, which I guess is, um, for people who don't know, I, I don't know. What, what, what is it? Like a gym shirt? Like a sleeveless t-shirt? Oh, um, how... Wife beater. It, it came That's to be called a, a, a wife beater because I guess, I don't, I don't know. I think it has to do with Italian, like Italian-American... Tank top. Like boomers. Who would just I don't know this was the this was the type of shirt that you would wear if you were beating your wife or something I don't I don't I don't know, but he's also got a pump shotgun, and combat boots, a tank mm -hmm. top is what it's called a yeah. tank top okay, and we're not done. He was dyslexic and had a lesser case of schizophrenia, allowing him to assume that the reason he saw crazy shit was because he was a little bit crazy. He had a grizzly Adam's beard and wore his hair in a mohawk. He never took off his aviator shades for any reason. He had a stuffed parrot on his shoulder named Rupert that he constantly asked for advice while ignoring the other party members as convenient, assuming they were hallucinations. He had an automatic combat shotgun he knew how to use. He also had memorized the anarchist's cookbook. He started the game with a pre-existing hatred of religion, cutlery, and books. His motivation was that he thought that the cult had stole his lawn gnomes while he had actually donated them to a charity auction, got high, and forgot about it. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> That's really good. There's a Most lot of important... fucking good creativity behind this character. Really Most good shit. Most importantly... <laughs> I know, right? Most importantly, he had a 320-page backstory that justified everything. <laughs> From his casual knowledge of physics to his ability to speak Portuguese flawlessly. <laughs> you can just imagine the sort of shenanigans that character was involved in. So, so, I have a question if you know the answer. This person came into this campaign with the character already made? Or no. was it something that they worked on over the course of the campaign? This was a reroll after a particularly bullshit death. Okay. A reroll meaning he made a new character. Okay, so the person playing this character is like already pissed off at the D at the DM. Yes, yes. Okay. This character was made in a week long fit of rage. Uh huh. All right, because the GM pulled some like absolute bullshit. We'll get into that actually. Okay. You'll get to hear about that about why he was made. Okay. The point to having such a long backstory was threefold: one, to ensure the GM would never actually read it, and. Two, since he would never read it <laughs> except for in excerpts I pointed out to justify things, I could rewrite and change things around completely at random without anyone noticing. <laughs> and, most importantly, three, convince everyone that I was serious about this character and that it wasn't simply the game-wrecking bullshit that it was. 
dickish, yes, but he really did have it coming. That's amazing. That's amazing dedication. Yeah. But that's it's a little, it's a, 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 a little bit, yeah. I mean, that's a little bit like dishonest. Like, I don't, I don't think you should be able to like tweak that character bio after a campaign starts, right? That sounds like a thing you definitely shouldn't be able to do. But you know, this person's goal is to fucking ruin the the GM's life, right? Yes. Okay. Now, would you like, would you like me to link you the text so you can follow along? Sure. All right. Just send it over to my my uh, personal computer that I have here in front of me in in, in my in my um <laughs> I, in my I room actually, my podcast room. I I actually love this setup so much. I gave the oh he he does like it. Look, I gave you the little <laughs> whiteboard behind you so you could like you know elucidate the points and shit. Yeah, I love it. It's pretty good, right? <laughs> So you could just kind of draw things out, you know, when you when you need to, if you need to draw a diagram or anything like that, you could you could do that easily. Mm -hmm. All right, let me get to where you are at uh, in this link. I'd uh, like to so start we're by actually scrolling down to director's cut part one. Okay, you you've handpicked what we're gonna be re you want to yes, read here yes, tonight. Yes, absolutely. All right, so I have yeah, the origin of Old Man Henderson. I have. The tanker truck incident, you want to skip that? Director's yeah, we're cut. skipping all that uh, because the director's cut goes into much more detail. Okay, I see it. I'm ready to go. All right. All right. Let me take a sip and I'll begin. Yum, yum, yum. Coffee. Yum, yum. Yum, 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 yum. Mmm, opioids. <laughs> what? I didn't OPM slip you anything. You're, you're, oh, you're drinking opium tea? I'm, hey. not, I'm not drinking opium tea. This is more of that green mist stuff I was telling you about. It's Animal Crossing. You could pretend it's it's opium tea. The whole the whole game is just like make-believe. All the items are like fake. Not a single thing in this room <laughs> does anything. So, well, I mean, you, know. you can turn on the music. God, this is so... Oh, I got, I got oh. it on. The, the music's playing. You get, can you guys hear the music? The, the music coming from the, the stereo over there? I yeah, just got it on. So I got it on shuffle. You guys got can hear. It, okay, it. cool, cool. Okay. Yeah, antifreeze tea. It's <laughs> All right. Let's begin. WHM, w Waffle House Millionaire, tends to get emotionally attached to a well made character. To him, they're the means of exploring a story, and a good story is something he thinks the very foundations of modern society are based on. He doesn't mind a bad end, so long as it's legitimate. Botched a role at a bad time? Shit happens. Bad choice in character? Meant to be. Simply screwed by circumstance? Them's the shakes. Lol, you're dead because you actually disagreed with my self-insert fetish fuel character with two katanas? I actually had to stop him from choking the fat <laughs> bastard. Which might make him sound like a bad person, ruled by petty emotion, but the truth is he's like a bear. Normally quite chill, not that easy to piss off normally, so he doesn't move often, but when he does, things like Henderson happen. So this is now being told from the perspective of the second person. Uh, of another player, yes, a different, yeah. a different player. Okay. It was the fifth session of the game with an experienced GM, using Trail of Cthulhu, a small distinction on the whole, but one worth mentioning in my eyes, and he'd already lost three characters to the stupidest shit. Seriously, the last one some evil force put a curse on him, and he ended up being killed by a horse, falling out of an <laughs> airplane. Yeah. So the GM goes to grab the pizza since it was his turn to pay, and I could feel the room cooling slightly. WHM's expression never changed. He never looked at me or the other two guys. I know you're thinking about leaving, but I want you to stay. I want you to watch what I'm going to do. <laughs> oh, it's really good. I knew this was bad because when <laughs> while he can I am sorry if I crack up while reading this. I love this. Because while he can get frustrated mad, which is hilarious by the way, he makes a choking noise in the back of his throat like a murloc caught in a trash compactor, when he gets truly pissed, he gets calm. We continue for the evening, and about a week later, we come back. He's giving me a ride, 
and he looks like he hasn't slept in two days, and the stubble is almost, but not quite, into gangly half-beard territory. I've done something. I'm not sure it's a good thing yet, he says as he hands me the little binder thing he keeps his character sheets and notes in. You've done something, I ask as I take the folder from him. I created? No, created is the wrong term. I feel like it was already there, waiting for me to give it life. I put a thing on paper, and I'm bringing it down on that fat fuck like the wrath of God. <laughs> uh-huh, I say as I look at the sheet. Is Henderson his first or last name? I don't even fucking know. <laughs> That's good. So oh, then... Yeah. <laughs> So then I look at the stack of paper he called a backstory. I start reading it, and I'm immediately fascinated by what can only be called a tome of madness. <laughs> <laughs> it switched perspectives and tone wildly. At one point, it's written with stage directions in the form of a script. At one point, it went to German. I know for a <laughs> fact he only knows like two words in German while I'm kind of fluent. The German was in his hand, and it was grammatically flawless. <laughs> that's great. I oh, that's great. I find my voice. What? Been asking that myself all fucking day. So, we get to the game, and the GM asks what we're all doing. Detective guy's drinking alone at his desk, waiting for one of his contacts to get back to him. Jimmy, the jock type, is struggling with math homework. My character, Professor Filkins, is grading midterms. Then, we get the introduction to Henderson. He's sitting in a lawn chair in his house, smoking a bong, staring at a wall he painted to look like a Hawaiian beach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, that's good. You know, Rupert, he addresses the stuffed parrot currently resting on the arm of his chair. You're a good friend. Most people would have asked for a hit, but you know how much I love this shit. Way better than what we had back in Nam. He chuckles and then begins reminiscing. You know, I still remember the first time I got high. Back in my older brother's van. No, must have been some good shit too because I'm an only child. Ain't that right, Charles? He looks over to an empty <laughs> corner of the room. Charlie? He then gets up, mildly concerned. Man, what the hell? He begins to search the house in earnest before sitting down on a chair in his kitchen. Where the fuck are my lawn gnomes? <laughs> I mean, did somebody steal them? Who the fuck would steal them? Yeah, they're worth a lot, but come on. He then pulls out a sharpie and begins to scribble on the table. All right, 215 gnomes, total weight about 800 pounds, total value approaching 40k. Not a one-man job. Need help to carry them. Need help to sell them. I'm looking at a large and well-organized group of assholes. <laughs> Why he is it Shrek? I, I'm trying to do a Scottish accent. Why is it Shrek? You're succeeding, but why? <laughs> I, I'm trying to imitate Count Dankula more than anything. All right. He looks into the middle distance. Like those guys down the street. They're Mormons, right? Large religious group come around in the early morning like those damn Charlies. Roops. I think we got a lead. <laughs> he called some roops. And then he poured a bottle of Jack Daniels in a large go cup and went and got in his car. So at this point, just real quick, the 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 guy hey. is reading all of this. I, I hate to interrupt you, but ten thousand bit ten thousand bits. Oh, Skeleton Chicken, that that's that's a lot of bits. Wow, thank thank you so much. My goodness. That's a lot of bits. Oh damn! Thank you, Skele Skele Chicken. Jeez. How many like how many monies is that? How many ducats is that? I don't know the. That's a hundred dollars. That's a hundred dollars. Wow! What the hell? Thank they paid you. More for that because like Amazon takes their cut, but for you, that's a hundred dollars. Damn. Ding ding ding! It's money time. Thank you so much. Wow. Um. I was trying to ask you, thank you so much for that, uh, Scala Chicken. I was trying to ask you, at this point, the ca the person playing the character is introducing their character? 
to the rest of the the rest of the table. That that's yes. that's the context this, of all this. This is, yes, this is what he is doing. Right. So the that, other three players is. are sitting there, while you know, and and the DM is is sitting there while this this dude is like acting out all of this to like introduce his character while they're just sitting there listening to this insanity. Yeah. Yeah, okay. no, this guy is fucking like descri like this is what he is doing while while all of the other players are doing things. Did you ever take a look at that house listing thing that that I sent you? The um on uh on Discord? The Zillow uh, listing with all the fucking weird shit in the I don't think so. You didn't get to he go he does the he does the puzzled emo emoji in the <laughs> <laughs> um Oh well, I don't want to derail the, the the story with that, but you need to take a look at that that because they've got a fucking room in there that's painted. The walls are painted like a beach, like yeah, like a tropical beach, and the floor is sand. Mm -hmm. And that's just one bedroom. <laughs> it's, it's it's you get you 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 got to see it. Um, anyway, you could go back to oh read, re reading this. I didn't want to derail it derail it too it's much. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. All right. Oh yeah, so by the way, um, I'm not quite doing the voice right. So before I get back to the rest of the party, it should be noted that Henderson looks a lot like Jeff Bridges of today. So imagine all of his lines in that voice, because that's the voice we were treated to at the table. Okay, I'm seeing a little bit of like, like I could see like Big Lebowski here, like a like an angrier conspiratorial version of, of, uh, of, of Big Lebowski, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like Big Lebowski meets like Pocket Sand guy. Mm hmm Dale Gribble. I'll I'll try to do I I'm not good at impressions, but I'll I'll do something close. I think the chat Jeff was Bridges. was really enjoying that Scottish ex accent that uh, you did you, that you that, that you did for no reason. They all found I, it funny. I found it funny. I see no reason why you shouldn't just continue to do that. Well, th that's the <laughs> thing. It's like the character like it's noted somewhere in here that the character shifts between Jeff Bridges and Demo Man from Team Fortress Two. Who's Scottish? Like he, like Scottish, yeah. Oh, that's why you shift. All right, so you have to shift too, then. Okay. I got. I'm, I'm not going to. But that's <laughs> okay. what they did. All right. It's a step beyond my capabilities. All right, yeah. So do the do the Scottish one. It's all good. Anyway, I've had the lead on a cult meeting for a while, and I managed to get an invite. I'm sitting in the front row, listening to a passionate Arab man talking about how there's more to the world than we know. Despite myself, I'm intrigued. Jimmy is sitting outside, thinking about his friends and trying to decide if he should go in and talk to them or what. The detective's gotten his call back and is now watching the scene with interest. A battered 92 Buick Century fails to get their attention until it suddenly executes a perfect handbrake turn and parks at the curb. Back to Henderson's point of view, he's blasting Creedence Clearwater <laughs> Revival when suddenly he sniffs the air and says, Mormons before whipping around and parking out front and killing the car. Okay. He then gets out of the car and pops the trunk. In full view of the detective, he then shoves Lurid Lucy, an inflatable sex toy of exceptional quality, to one side and pulls out some sort of Israeli-made combat shotgun and starts walking towards the house. <laughs> he then kicks open the door while our mouths are agape and shouts the words that let us know the game would never be the same. I'm going to move my microphone away for just a moment. Mm -hmm. Muckle darned cultists! Are you not least be keeping me wee man? <laughs> so what does that mean? Muckle darned cultists, are you namblies be keeping me wee men? What are namblies? I don't know. What is he? Uh, he so he's just on a fucking a, a mission of chaos. He's just an agent of chaos. <laughs> Oh fuck! He wants his gnomes back. Oh, so that that's that's his plot line. Like that's his motivation. Like he's yes. not interested in whatever this GM has planned. His fucking goal is to get his gnomes back. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, at this point, the GM has not yet realized what Henderson is. In fact, I think I'm the only one who truly understood what was about to happen to existential horror, as at this point in time... Here's another fun fact about WHM. When he's at a game table with a character sheet, you aren't at the table with him. You're at the table with whatever <laughs> character he's playing, until further notice. 
I don't think he could have metagamed if he tried. <laughs> that's amazing. That's how you should play these games, though, I think. That's probably the, that's probably the, way, the best way to play them. Mm-hmm. So anyway, the GM has decided to regain control the only way he knows how. By killing Mike's latest character, which is WHM, I mm -hmm. guess, mm -hmm. via bullshit. So, he summons a Shaga. <laughs> Hen Henderson, having passed the will check to not puke up his brains and winning the initiative, comments on how it's the ugliest fucking poodle ever, oh god, and then shoots it in the fucking face until it dies. <laughs> then he shoots the cultist guy who summoned it. Then he shoots me. Then a random guy. Then he pisses on the Shoggoth's corpse since everyone else is too busy losing their shit in a panic over the creature that should not be being summoned and casually sets the tapestry on fire with his cigar as he walks out the door. <laughs> Good. So then everyone still alive runs the fuck away from the burning building before the cops show up. Henderson makes it home, about three blocks away, when he realizes something horrible. He totally fucking forgot about the lawn gnomes. He runs, he runs back to the still burning building, only to see the fire department has already arrived. They inform him that no gnomes were in the building that they can tell. On the one hand, he's relieved as fuck since he didn't lose the gnomes, and killing that many little people would probably constitute a hate crime. Never mind that he totally just leveled a church with the speed and brutality of the fucking Spetsnaz. Anyway, he goes to try and cook up where they could have gone at the local pub. The GM at this point looks up at us from his notes. He's clearly been thrown so far off the fucking tracks by what just happened that he can't just improv his way out of it. I... I think I need a minute. Or ten. <laughs> Good. He, he amscrays, and I look over to the man I thought I knew. He had it, he has his cell phone out, and is asking us if we're cool with Chinese food since we had pizza last week. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Asks one of our fellow players. Remember when I said I was getting revenge? I brought out the big guns. I don't even have the small guns anymore. I was given some once and promptly returned them. Won't be needing these, I said. <laughs> Hello, Chinese food place I forget the name of. You still got that special on the shrimp fried rice? The, the other person, I love the way that they're writing this as if you're kind of, it, it's halfway like, yeah, you're aware of the fact that it's a, it's an RPG game, but they're also writing it as if you're in the universe of it too. Yeah. Which is great. Because that's absolutely necessary for you to get into the mindset of the people that were playing this game. So, mm -hmm. yeah, like, thank God that the second person stepped in to, to, to fill in the blanks on this or to, like, kind of take the reins from him. Because this was the way this needed to be to be told, you know? Yo, it's so fucking good. Have you, uh, when was the last time you played any tabletop games? It's been a while. Uh, the last time, Skeletrick Chicken back with another 10,000 bits. Skeletrick, Chicken, what the heck? What the actual heck? What the mega fuck? Wow, thank you so much. Uh, damn. Uh, why? What? What's? 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 What's the occasion? What's the reason for the for the season here? That's that's two hundred dollars straight down the tubes. Down the tubes, man. Down. I mean, I just you know, I, I, I could use it. I'll, pr I'll probably buy some like tacos with it or something. But that's like damn. Spend responsibly. Thank you, though. Thank you. You enjoy old man... He says, I enjoy... Or she. I enjoy old man Henderson and I got paid today. All right. You know I, what? Or sorry. I got paid today. I accept it. I accept that. I accept that, explan that explanation. I do. I accept it. <laughs> um, Archville says, I gotta warn you right now. If you do play Call of Cthulhu... Uh, Trail of Cthulhu, make sure your DM knows what they're doing. But you always need a DM who who knows what they're doing for any tabletop game, right? Or is or is Trail of Cthulhu uh, notorious for being a little bit more complicated? I've never played it. Um, I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, have you have you done a lot of tabletop gaming? Uh, I tend to GM more than anything. You know, yeah, I don't know if I said this to you before, but I feel like I have. But I feel like you'd be an exceptional GM for something like this. I, that's one. Of, there was a moment where I was really, really proud of myself. I have a friend who play, who literally has, like, three tabletop games going at any given time. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and he called me the best GM he's ever had. I just, I get that feeling about you, like you're you're creative, but you're um, you're also, you know, you you have like that kind of like you're you're calm, and you you know how to roll with things. You know, uh, you've got a very soothing voice. I feel like you, for a lot of reasons you'd be good at it. I I definitely went overboard for the last game that I GM'd. I went and like made special audio files that I would play over like nice speakers. And you go the extra mile. You always I, go yeah, the extra I, mile. I do a lot of planning. Um, Fred's the type of guy where it's like you do something, you you do it right, go big or go home. You know, he's mm -hmm. he's always he's always fucking doing every if he's gonna do something, he's doing it the best he possibly can. Yeah, I'm I don't tend to take half measures with things that I do. If I'm gonna do it, it it's worth like if I if I'm going to take if I'm going to do it, it's worth doing right. Right. That's I get that I get that impression from you. Um my experience with tabletop games is minimal. Uh I played it uh I played I played D and D specifically. I don't think I'd ever played any anything else. Uh, I had a group of friends when I was in college. Uh, I pro I don't even think we made it full way through the, the, the campaign. Um, but the people who are into these games, they tend to take it, like, really, really, uh, really seriously. Like, it's not... Um, I feel like there are people who casually play these games, but more often than that, my experience has been... Um, it's... It, they're, they're fucking hardcore. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I remember there was some... Um, they had, you know, they have... I feel like everybody who plays these kinds of games, like, has stories like this one. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember one of my friends, um, you know, had been in a campaign or, like, several campaigns with somebody that he actively fucking hated and would mm -hmm. would deliberately do things to to ruin this person's life. I remember yeah. um, just there was, there was one story he told me that, and I, I'm not going to remember the, the specifics of it because this is, again, this is from college, but he had told me of an event where he was able to, in-game, and it was all above board, no shenanigans, he was able to trap the other person's character in a piece of jewelry. And then keep the piece of fucking jewelry. To, and apparently, he was not allowed by the DM to use the character until the other person let it out of the jewelry, which he never did. And thereby force, yeah, thereby forcing this person to make a new a new character if he wanted to continue the campaign, basically because he wanted the fucking person to quit because he hated him. That. That's incredible. And and, and that's just the thing I remember. There was like tons of shit like that, but again, that was yeah, that was a long time ago, and those were my college days, and you know. Uh, Drugs happened. That's, yeah, that's awful. <laughs> but yeah, it was like a, it was like a real scum move. Right? I remember even his, his, his friend, that they were also playing the game with, was like, you know, like wow, like that was, that was fucked up. Like, are you gonna give him his character back? And he was just like, no, no. Like other people were questioning, like the, the ethics of of this, you know. Right. Um, and he was not allowed to. I, I guess theoretically, the guy could have taken his character sheet. And like went to another D and D game and used the character. I mean, I don't know how somebody was gonna stop him from doing that, but like in that fucking game, that DM was not going to allow that person to use that character because it was trapped in a piece of jewelry. That's ugh. And now apparently, see, that's the thing you could do. Now, see, I could see that being played cool, where like one character is basically like. One character is like maybe a powerful warrior mm -hmm. who is like who is in a piece of jewelry that the that the party finds and then is released um intermittently. Right. That would be really cool. I actually think I'd really enjoy. That's actually kind of the premise of uh the game Moss though, where like the the main character quill finds a glass shard and it's a vr game and so you oh. are the spirit inside of the shard and you're like moving things and helping quill it's really cute fred's a, a vr nerd he went for yeah, it yeah I've, I've i've been enjoying vr quite a bit uh i played that trover saves the universe game like the brick and morty game it's kind of good looking uh but it was yeah i don't know i didn't get it did you try it uh no i've not tried it well <clears throat> I, 
I think I think if since you're into VR, it's probably worth checking out for you. It seems like a solid, I guess, v, VR title. If if like if, if if that's your thing, type of thing. I don't know if you'll appreciate the humor of it. I honestly <laughs> most mostly did, but um, yeah. Anyway, off topic. It's uh, okay. No, I, I I have quite a few VR games I need to get through. Put it on the VR backlog. Yeah, you yeah, do yeah. need it. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's true, do. Jen. Oh. Do, do you think Fred Skeletor has a Chicken's back? Skeleton Chicken, thank you again. Wow. I Damn. I think you have a new sugar someone. Sugar chicken? A new sugar gender. a new sugar, sugar chicken. chicken. Uh if it's uh if it's a, a a male, we could call it a sugar cock. Sugar cock. That that's three hundred dollars of bits. What am I gonna do with all this money now? Fuck. Well, it's just, damn. Um, shit. Anybody got any weed? No, it's not. It's not funny. Dr drugs are illegal. Drugs are against the law. <laughs> Turbo Tail says, "Buy more drifting Joy Cons." Yeah, there we go. Mm. Yeah, I'll just buy some more Joy Con, some brand new Joy Cons that can drift. It's not drifting now. I'm just moving the the camera so the fucking switch doesn't fall asleep. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, back to the topic of ta tabletop games yes um actually why don't you just we, get back to reading this because i guess there's a, there's a lot to get through here yeah let's keep going yeah it's, it's a long we, story so it is long um, tail we might not finish it tonight damn all right all right yeah do have all a right. part two part two is cool you're you're welcome to take over too unless you're enjoying me reading it and reacting i am really you're enjoying it's, it's the same reason why i love your videos i love listening to you talk i mean listen if Aww. when when you get when you get tired, you know, I can take over. We'll do it that way. Sure. I think I'll be okay, though. All right. Oh, by the way, before we keep going, I want to let everyone know. I, I am putting my, like, campaign-making abilities to use right now, but I can't talk anymore about it because it's Ender NDA. A secret project. Oh, secret, my God. Yeah. yeah I, I signed I wonder there, what it I, is. I cannot speak of it. I think you... You, you uh mentioned something like this but then I, but that I, was i can't but that was it yeah i can't yeah. specify yeah yeah i, I got cannot specify anything. yeah As i actually i know as much about as much as you do chat the town of frankware <laughs> all right all right part two so when I ended the last story, we had a dead Shoggoth, a burning building, a bunch of MIA lawn gnomes, and we totally just ordered some bitchin' Chinese food. Anyway, at this point in the proceedings, Henderson decided that if he couldn't get a proper brainstorming going at home as to the location of the gnomes, then he, then he could always try Harry's Bar. Good old Harry was scared proper shitless of Henderson after an incident with a commie bastard pinball machine <laughs> prior to the game's start so he could drink in peace and nobody really bothered him about the mounting tab. So he's sitting there working on a new plan of action with his two best friends, Mr. Daniels and Mr. Walker, when suddenly a news report comes on. Apparently, some woman was commenting on how the quiet religious group a few blocks away from the bar just had their shit wrecked. Henderson was very interested in knowing that they were not in fact Mormons, but rather Disciples of the Yellow King, which apparently were a radical sect of Buddhism that had the details promptly ignored since there was a hockey game on. Then, Henderson had a really good idea, since somebody at the other table had the Dragnet theme as their ringtone. He knew fuck all about looking for people, but a private detective. So after a few minutes in the phone book, he decides to literally call the first name he saw under the PI heading. By sheer freakish coincidence, the phone in the detective player's office starts to ring. Hello? I need a man who's good at finding things, doesn't have a great love of religious loonies, and doesn't mind maybe shooting an ugly ass poodle or two. I'm sorry, but who is this? Name's Henderson. I need some help from a professional. No, no argument here, so you're looking to hire a PI. Yup. Had something precious stolen from me. And that was? Roughly $40,000 of, of lawn gnomes. <laughs> there was a silence both in-game and at the table. What? 
I'm not saying it was cultists, but I'm pretty sure it was cultists. Or aliens, but that seems unlikely given the circumstances. If you're interested, we can talk down at Harry's on the south side by the river. And then he hung up. Since the, since the detective was quickly getting nowhere with his missing persons case, he decided it'd be good for a laugh. Henderson, meanwhile, had discovered that Harry had acquired a Pac-Man arcade machine and decided to fill the scoreboard with profanity. <laughs> good. So, when the detective arrives, he asks for some guy named Henderson and was promptly pointed to a man in unusual attire who was teaching a girl how to shoot pool. Henderson, hold on just a second. The important part of a, sh of a shot in pool is to make sure it's smooth. Take all the time you need to line up the shot. Don't let them rush you, he says. And then he sinks his last three balls and the eight in one stroke. <laughs> he then turns to the detective, who promptly recognizes him and tries to leave. Too bad for him, Henderson decided to follow. So how do you think you're gonna go about this? I'm gonna get the hell back in my car and leave the crazy ass arsonist slash murderer behind. No shit. He looks over his shoulder back at the bar. Which one? He looks at the detective poking him in the chest. What? The church. You burned down a church. They started it. <laughs> because you walked in with a shotgun? Yes, exasperated at the infuriatingly flawless logic of a complete asshole. <laughs> no, because they stole my goddamned lawn gnomes. Yeah, you mentioned that. How do you fucking steal $40,000 in decorative lawn fixtures? Where the hell did you even get that many gnomes? I worked bri briefly as a prostitute in Thailand. <laughs> the antique gnome collection was my retirement plan. What? Oh, Ended up riding some dude's junk all the way back home. Hell of an uncomfortable ride, <laughs> let me tell you what. Not meant for the ocean blue. And I would know. You want- you understand the logistics of riding another man's junk across the ocean. Well, in a general sense, I took a course on shipbuilding back in college. This was before we had these fancy navigational gypsy pathfinder space ferries. <laughs> it's I... GPS. Yes. Yeah. All right. You said you were looking for gnomes. Actually, that was earlier. Just now I was explaining that I knew so much about catching a ride on somebody's junk because of vigorous study in my youth. <laughs> Let's focus on the gnomes. You think they were stolen by a cult? Only thing that makes sense from what I know. I want you to look into the Disciples of the Yellow King. See if they're doing anything suspicious. Actually, I was looking into them already for another reason. Looks like they've got a hand in human trafficking. Lawn gnomes seems like an odd direction to go in, but I won't deny that they're up to no good. I'll let you know if I find anything worth talking about. Sounds good. I'm usually at Harry's unless I'm not. Now if you'll excuse me, I have to go see a man about a horse. Henderson then walked across the street, stole a bicycle, and rode off into a plot hole for a brief <laughs> period of time. Oh, that's fucking good. Oh. <laughs> Oh, by the way, these, these dialogue uh, things, like, you could do, you could read, like, the, the Henderson, and I'll be the other character if you want. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's uh, a little bit easier on you. Um, I, I would be glad. I would be glad to take that up. Now, are you going to read the, um, the, 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 the I italics? No, no, I'm not going to okay. that. Okay, all right. No. It's just him talking to the board. Hmm. All right, so actually, why don't you take over for a bit now that Henderson is taking a break? Give my voice a rest. All right, let me set this uh, <clears throat> podcast studio up. All right, get that. Look, that's a good shot. All right, all right. So at this point, the guy playing the detective decided to give my character an easy in with the group, since poor Jimmy was still on his lonesome for the moment. Oh, hold on, hold on. Ugh. Sorry about that. Continue. Now, I thought that uh, the person writing this was the detective character. No, I was wrong. Uh, this is the detective. Yeah, the de it's written from the detective's perspective. It is. Oh, because he's saying, because it says, all right, at this point, the guy playing the detective decided to give my character an easy in with the group. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, right, right, right. No, it's not written from the, from the detective's perspective. I forgot. Sorry, it's written from... 
um, Jimmy's perspective. Uh, waffle Stomp. Is it Waffle Stomp? Is that the person's name? Wait, on... I, thought his, I thought his name was Mike. Who's so Mike? The person playing the person playing Henderson is Mike. Right. Also known as Waffle House Millionaire. All right, so Waffle House Waffle House Millionaire is the person slash Mike slash Henderson. Yes. Slash Waffle House Millionaire slash Mike slash Henderson. Okay. Yeah. All right. So at this point, the guy playing the detective, who is the person writing this, no, that doesn't make sense. What do you mean? You get what I'm saying? The guy playing the detective decided to give my character an easy in with the group. Right. So if the guy who's writing this is the guy playing the detective, then how is he? How is no, he? No, no, he, I'm, no. He's not playing the detective. I'm sorry. I, I misspoke there. So who's writing this? A different player at the table. So now there's there like, there's three there four, different. There are four four players, I believe, three or four players and a GM. And now there's you're getting the perspective of at least three people who were involved in this game at this point. Uh, two. You have the person who was playing Henderson, who was up above describing yeah. his character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the the director's cut is all written from the perspective of a different member, just one of the bystanders in the group. Okay, so basically, subject to the insanity of Henderson. What I think you're saying is, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. All right. The guy playing the detective decided to give my character an easy in with the group since poor Jimmy was still on his lonesome for the moment. In rolls James Fink, one of several characters whom Henderson killed, and the only one besides Simon whose name ever got remembered by the rest of the group. James is a longtime friend of the detective, whose name I just remembered was Albert Yo Johansson, pronounced Johansson for some fucking reason. Back when Al was still a cop, Jim was a thug for the local mob. They worked up the ladders of their respective organizations, gained the respect of their co-workers, and eventually ended up leaving their jobs on good terms with their bosses. In Jim's case, it was because his wife had a baby on the way then, and asked him to find safer work. Al ended up in a shootout, where his partner got killed, fighting against a bunch of crazy meth addicts. Shortly after quitting, they ran into each other by coincidence, and discovered that the other one was the bastard who kept wrecking our job slash getting away and ended up becoming fast friends. This continued on a fairly regular basis for several years until the Henderson situation and Al decided he wanted backup and there was nobody in the world he trusted more. So, Jim said as he walked into the office, who's the client? Some crazy motherfucker named Henderson. That is first. Here, I'll, here, I'll play Jim. I'll okay. play Jim. All right, you're Jim. So, who's the client? Some crazy motherfucker named Henderson. That is first or last name? Man, I have no fucking clue. All right. So what's he want? Apparently, he thinks a cult stole his antique lawn gnome collection. So, drop the nutter. Two good reasons not to. The cult he's accusing, I honestly believe to be involved in both activity illegal and bizarre. The other is that any man who can afford to, to just have 40 grand in gnomes lie around can write a paycheck. Why the hell would somebody have 40? Don't tug on this particular string, Jim. Just trust me. Just don't. <sighs> so, what's our first lead? Well, I was going to go kick around in the ashes of the church my new boss burned down, and then see if there were any witnesses. Wait, our boss caused that church fire? Yeah, so you're in? You kidding? I need to see how deep this rabbit hole goes. <laughs> that evening, they went to the site, and discovered the Shagath's corpse. There wasn't enough left of it to force sand checks... Sanity checks. Sanity checks, right. yeah. But plenty to make them start asking some pointed questions. Because I imagine in this game, you need to fuck everything you see, you have to roll a sanity check, right? Right, yeah. Just looking at some of these things can challenge your sanity. Love and like, very, alongside your health, you also have sanity. Very Lovecraftian type of a fucking thing, right? Yeah, yeah. You have to like nurse your sanity. This reminds me of that game, Pro Eternal Darkness. You ever play that? Love that fucking game. I have not. Um, the professor 
Yep. The professor ended up on the list of people to look into when this body was identified. And then they found the page of the Necronomicon. Recognizing the occult symbols on it, the detective dropped it off at his office while he went to ask if he could borrow a notebook out of the cold case evidence lockers. Henderson, meanwhile, discovered that during a recent bender, he had agreed to chaperone a dance at the local high school. <laughs> <laughs> so he swings by the detective's office to let him know where he'll be. So he's at the office, and he meets Jim. Asks him to pass along the info to Al, and then snags the scrap of the Necronomicon on the way out the door, saying he needed paper. Jim failed his spot to notice which sheet he took. The GM fudged it, probably assuming Henderson was going to read it, and he could kill him off via sanity damage. Boy, howdy, was he wrong. <laughs> so Henderson shows up to the dance in his usual attire, slightly less scruffy than usual, and volunteers to sit outside and make sure punks from the other schools didn't try and gatecrash the party. The more proper people were glad to keep him out, since that meant he wouldn't be able to corrupt the youth. Henderson was glad because there was no way they'd let him smoke the monster blunt he just rolled inside. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking great. <gasps> oh, the, the, the way this is written adds so much to it. it. It really is. I then realized as he lit an quote-unquote Atomica, as he called it, a blunt roughly the size of a Cuban cigar... <laughs> <laughs> that there was currently only one piece of paper on his person. This is amazing! Are you kidding me? <laughs> as soon as I found out where he was, I see. Okay, I don't know what in I... Character. In, in character. In character. As soon as I found out where he was in character, I went to the school to try and prevent the inevitable. Meanwhile, Jimmy, the jock, was sitting outside. Sad because his girlfriend didn't come because she was too busy being a crazy cultist. Henderson decides to introduce him to the wonderful world of substance abuse. And like a bro, passes the blunt. <laughs> to be totally honest, I'm surprised this moment didn't make the original story. Since smoking the giant book of bad juju was the best thing to ever happen on accident. So, uh, but when he says original story, he means uh, Waffle House Millionaire's uh, recounting of events, which is very short and not near comprehensive. Right. This is the director's cut. This was another yeah. person being like, here's all the things that this guy forgot. Okay. It's like, no, if you're going to tell this story, you're going to tell the whole story. Tell it the right way. Yeah. So, Jimmy took a hit and totally failed every check the GM sent his way. He saw Jesus... And then Jesus turned into a giant squid thing. In the deep distance, the weed softened the blow by masking everything behind a cartoony afterglow. So, imagine for a moment... Wait, wait, you know what? Let me, let me do the obvious thing here, Fred. Hold on. All right, all right. Uh, imagine for a moment... Watching Elmer Fudd scream, Cthulhu for taken, and shoot Daffy in the face. Only instead of a fucked up beak and a muttering of, this means war, he screams, He comes! And tentacles rip out of his form to molest wildlife. This is the part where I had to go to the door and retrieve the precious shrimp fried rice. But I came back to... So wait... I only lost 15 sanity? Yeah. What now? Oh, wait, you want to read that? No, it's okay. I pass it back. <laughs> Henderson... <laughs> Henderson, of course, manages to ace the tests. And then comments on how... This is some, some really good shit, man. And how Jimmy is... A, a lightweight. <laughs> Jimmy then does a bit better and they get to swapping stories 
Pretty soon, the cult comes up, and they agree to join forces for the sake of cute girls next door and lawn gnomes everywhere. Sadly, that roach burned fast and hard, so when me and Al got there, all we saw was the crazy old fuck and some ginger teenager crashed together against the wall, giggling at those... those silly squid things in people's heads. So we then discover the kid's connection to the madness, and promptly discover what he knows. This leads to the three people who didn't have school tomorrow, both in and out of game, to prepare a stakeout of some church. So at this point, we all get into Jim's van, and park down the street from a church. The church happens to be on the end of a road, at a T-shaped intersection, and we're parked a bit up the way from it. Here, pass it back. May I? Uh, yeah, the, your your hand. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that's yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll 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 take I'll take the dialogue. All of it, or you just want to be Henderson? Or, uh, yeah, let, let, let let's do the dialogue together. You're, you're Henderson. Yeah, yeah. Man, stakeouts are boring. No shit, Henderson. You have anything useful to contribute? Not really. Should have brought a book or something. Man, I just gotta say your Scottish accent's so good. <laughs> I'm literally just doing my best impression of Count Dankula, the that's, man who destroyed UKIP. That that's one of my like the, the accents I just cannot do. Like my Scottish accent is is just painfully fucking embarrassingly bad. Um, would you be pay Would you be paying attention to the to the building if you had reading material? Not really. Then I guess that would defeat the purpose of a stakeout, wouldn't it? Not if you two are watching. Hell, we could have two of us watching the third man playing bait. You'd volunteer for that? Beats the fuck out of sitting in a van with two dudes who won't even let me smoke. Didn't you smoke evidence last time you lit up? I regret nothing. <laughs> fuck it. You guys hungry or something? I'm gonna go grab some munchies from the gas station. Bring coffee. And some cheese doodles. Alright, back in. Fuck it. Just leave the doors unlocked. You want to read a little bit? Or you... No, let me take it. Let me take yeah. the. No, I'll take it. You want to take it? Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. And he went in search of snacks. When he hopped out of the van, one of the cultists happened to see him on a lucky roll, and as he walked around the corner into the gas station, they ran out and beat the shit out of the two of us left behind. <laughs> About the time we got dragged into the building, Henderson had finally got out of the bathroom. About the time we got tied to the altar, Henderson had stopped to try on hats. About the time the ritual reached its height, Henderson was debating which ACDC album was the best with the cashier. <laughs> That's awesome! The end, the end result of that argument was while they couldn't decide if Back in Black or Dirty Deeds was the best album, Black Eyes was pretty boss and heralded only good. So then, great. with some tense tests of willpower and resolve, Al managed to free Jim and hold off the cultists while an evil presence steadily took chunks off of his sanity score until he was no longer able to resist. Smiling in malicious glee, Hustur began to stalk his new prey. At this point in time, Henderson had just walked out of the store, just in time to see my character get murder glomped by a monster wearing my friend's face. So. <laughs> He does the only logical thing he could. He stole a fucking fuel truck. <laughs> so then we find out he was packing C4 and was making all sorts of tests while gunning it down the road towards us. He made it and bailed just in time for the truck to hit him off of me and run my ass over. <laughs> Hostour rode that truck to its end while Henderson placed a call to Jimmy. Hey kid, Henderson here. Found out what the nasties are weak against. What's that, Mr. Henderson? Point blank annihilation. <laughs> that was Aussie. He then hangs up the phone and proceeds to walk off. I finished bleeding to death two turns later. That's right, motherfucker left me to die. <laughs> sure, it wasn't like I was screaming for help, but he could have at least checked. Since I'm not... <laughs> Sure, how familiar this board is with certain Cthulhu based rulebooks, I was basically in what DD calls alive with negative hit points. So, helpless, dying, but there's still hope. 
until the back trail ignited and the tiny amount of fire damage ended me. <laughs> so he left him there to die and then allowed him to burn, his just body to burn. Mm-hmm. My one consolation was that the fire blew up the gas station and took the bar he left me for with it. Then, the detective's player, after the fastest reroll I've ever seen, entered stage left. William Brocklaw runs in and yells about how his newly refurbished bar just got destroyed on the evening of its grand reopening. Hey man, if it makes you feel any better, I can help you get back at the people who did this. Who are you? Name's Henderson. This is my right-hand man, Rupert. And you know who did this? I'm fairly certain I do. Ever hear of the Disciples of the Yellow King? Are you saying this was done by cultists? Look, I'm not saying it was cultists. Re but it was probably cultists. Come on, your bar might be gone, but it's not the only watering hole in town. Ever hear of a pub called Harry's? You look like it could use a drink. At Harry's bar, he got filled in on what Henderson knew while getting a couple of drinks on the house. I probably would have been there too were I not slightly pissy about losing two characters in as many sessions. So after a few minutes of back and forth, Will decides he'll get in on it, if Henderson can provide some proof as to the whole evil cultist thing. So why'd you decide to go after them? Revenge, mostly. Really? What happened? Same bastard who blew, blew up your bar killed two of my buddies. This is after they stole all my fucking lawn gnomes. Damn. Tell you what, when we catch the guy, I'll hold him still while you kill him. Mighty generous of you. This was the point where we called it for the evening, and at the start of the next session, Henderson he headed up a daring plan to kidnap one of the heads of the cult. I'll tell that one next time, but... Quick spoiler, I managed to get three of my own characters killed in one session. Yeah. Yeah, Cole, Cole Bosch, what's up? Uh, Henderson was responsible for the deaths of everybody. And the entire time, like, the GM is just powerless to stop him from totally derailing the entire campaign. Yes. I mean, at what point do you just get up and walk the fuck out? You know, at what point are you just like, you know what, enough's enough. You're ob Obviously, you are just fucking trolling. You don't want to fucking take this seriously. You're ruining my game. I'm not doing this anymore. At what point does that happen? I think that's what he was trying to do, is get the GM to quit. That, that's the, that was the, the end game. This is, like, you know... You know how you get two people up in each other's faces screaming at each other about things they'll never convince the other of? Yeah. That's what this is like. Just very long and drawn out. <laughs> and one person came in meticulously planned. <laughs> while the other person had nothing. He's just sitting there uh, absolutely obstinate. This is just... Uh, this is amazing. Um... This really makes me want to play a tabletop game, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. I saw somebody in chat say that before, too. They were like, oh, it's making me miss D&D. &D. But it's just like, dang, my God, man. This is just... The, 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 just anything is possible, you know, type of a thing. Where you could just let your imagination go absolutely fucking nuts. Mm -hmm. It's got to be so much fun. With the right people, though. With the right people. Right. You know, no, that no, seems tabletop important. role playing games can be like ev events that you will remember forever. If yeah. They're done well. Yeah, yeah. There's the right people, you know, like most things in life, doing it with the right people is the most important part. Mm hmm. Uh, do you want to take uh, part three or you want me to. You want me to take I'm over? happy to keep going. Um, you, you gave me. I think it was the muckle darned cult historian Namblies be keeping me wee men. Yeah. Uh, that fucked up my voice for a moment. Uh, actually, you know what? We're an hour and ten minutes into this. Um, mind if I get up and make another cup of tea? And you hold down the fort in the meantime? You want to make another cup of tea? All right, but if you do yeah, that, yeah. then you have to get. Yeah, you have to actually. Yep, he's doing yeah, it. Yeah, no, I, I got right, it. Cool. All right, yeah. uh, let me go ahead and. Um... Yeah, I'll hold down the four. You go grab some more tea, okay? All right, sweet. Thanks. I'll be right back. Fuck it up.
getting into it. Oh, look how into it he is. Oh, he's fuck. Oh, he's into it. Oh, that's good shit. All right, so uh, while I'm while he's out, guys, I think I should just probably take this opportunity to. Oh fuck, it's not gonna work. Just look at look at some porn real quick. Just on my just, just spank it. We'll just rub one out real fast before he gets back. It's kind of just. What's up, Marsh? Uh, Marsh Luca Mello. Yeah, look, I only, I actually, I only have four, I think. Yeah, four reactions left in the game. This is because I'm pretty sure I didn't go more than like a couple of days without playing the game since I got it. But look at that, yeah, only four left. I missed the axolotl. Do the clap; it makes the perfect sound. Why does it have to... Why does the camera have to do that, though? What is it? Uh, uh... Uh, nope. Not that one. Uh... Which one is the clap? What's it called? Delight. Yeah, delight. There we go. Alright, just b block what's actually happening. There we go. There's the shot. It's happening. Unknown says, I do that too when I'm on row three. A dark side fill. I'm pulling a dark side fill. Yeah, well, at least dark side fill, like, he did it in the beginning of the broadcast. He didn't do it in the fucking, in the, directly in the middle of the broadcast. He didn't just stop and say, all right, guys, I'm going to rub one out real quick and then start doing it. Twitch T says, glad he can masturbate while happy. I, as far as I know, there's no emo emoji or whatever. There's no reaction in the game that will enable you to, like, you know, sad come. Like, sad wank. Like, a wank while crying. I don't think there's a way you could pull that off. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll look into that a little bit more and find out if that's true. Maybe it's possible. I don't know. Does anybody here know uh, if, there's, if there's a way to make it look like your character is sadly masturbating in Animal Crossing New Horizons for the Nintendo Switch. A sad wank. Yeah, you have to get the sad wank reaction. Have a sad come. Teardrop face paint. That would be a good place to start. That would be a good place to start. Yeah, I can't wait. When he comes back, I'm gonna have him, like, just look at the stream. Hi, hi there. How's it? I'll leave you to it. <laughs> no, stay. I want you to watch. Oh, I can't believe I got caught jerking off. Oh no. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh, oh, oh no. Uh, I guess I gotta take a nap after. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, you're you're clear to come back in, buddy. Uh, oh, I, I I knew. I know you don't take too long. Okay. Yeah, you know I'm quick. Uh, yep. Oh, you! I was gonna tell you to wipe the seat off first. Uh, I got a little bit of distance on on um on my load there. <laughs> uh, no, you know what? Just baking it for a little bit, man. It um it'll just dry up. You'll 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 be fine. Yeah, just kind of wipe it. Yeah, just wipe. Just kind of just, you know, just rock back and forth till it like soaks into the fabric, and then just forget about it. You know. Uh, also, yeah, you may want to go make a third cup of tea. I'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. The shorts lose the shorts. The shorts lose. Okay, the I wiped shorts. it all off on your fish trophies. We're good. Oh, that's fine. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I like the way my character is jiggling, so I'm gonna keep that, that, uh, that emoji going. It's just gonna keep going, huh? Yeah, it's just gonna, just gonna keep jiggling. Is that okay? Yeah, all right. I. 
looks kind of like advanced Parkinson's a little bit. Does like, it? Legitimately. Why is it Damn. moving like that? That's kind of disconcerting, actually. You know, you're fucking right. That's exactly what it does look like. Yeah. All right. Let me see if I could find one that's less uh, worrisome. It's not like a cute jiggle. It's like... It's a weird jiggle. Neurological yeah. damage yeah, yeah, jiggle. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Um, hmm. Uh, okay. How about that jiggle? That's even worse! That's, <laughs> that's e even worse! <gasps> oh, God. That's like, yeah, I got hit by a fucking car. Like, Jesus. Like, I I'm requesting you end your wiggle search. All right, wiggle search over. You're going to have to stare at that the entire time, okay? <laughs> you look like an SCP. I am an SCP. On blinking Animal Crossing creepypasta. Now you both are. Yes. Just recursive staring forever, endlessly. <laughs> we're, we're like the weeping angels from Doctor Who. Doctor Who, yeah. Just don't that's look at them. That's how you beat them. You get them to stare at each other. Don't, don't look at. Yep, we're caught in the loop. Man, how do you remember that shit? I forget everything I watch almost immediately after it ends. No. All right. Do you want to keep reading okay. this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Okay, I'll continue. Ah. Oh. Technically, I mistyped in the, the end of the last thread. I re-rolled three times in one sitting, but I already had one character ready to go at the beginning. When we first arrived for the game that day, I was determined to not get upset at a character's death. It's just a game. I'll pretend. I failed. Eventually. I don't even remember the name of my first character. <laughs> the session began with the cultists using a mob front, planning to kill the son of a rival crime family. Incidentally, the same one Jim used to work for. I was playing the role of the bodyguard, and I was quickly knocked out and thrown in the trunk of one car while the kid was loaded into the back seat of another. Enter stage left, Henderson and Will. They, seem th they see them wacky cultists up to no good, and they decide to nick the vehicle with the visible hostage. While Will hotwired it, Henderson punched a hole in the gas tank of their second car and lit it off. <laughs> They then sped away after unknowingly leaving my character to burn, screaming, in the trunk of the second car. <laughs> approximately <laughs> approximately <laughs> last time between the start of the session and first character death, 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Oh, that's fucking great! <laughs> that's so good! That's so good! He's in character. They didn't know he was oh, in there. Oh, Henderson doesn't give a fuck! Oh my god! the smart thing to do the oh, worst part so is good. given their circumstance that's the right thing to do right oh well listen henderson in character now the, the the funny part is you know that the person who's playing henderson knew that there knew was it. a person in the trunk but henderson didn't so actually right. henderson has like plausible deniability or or, or whatever you know right like how do you think that he like it works in character but it also R suspiciously helps his goal of just murdering every <laughs> other player it's character just... right he's just like he's not it's not possible that he would meta game right it's why this... the, it's, it's why the character was designed this way him designing the character like this in a way was metagaming yes if, if you think about it right because yes. he knew if he made this character in such a way that he was going to be able to do these things and like not have it be fucking questioned, you know. Like I don't, I don't think that this game has, I don't know, an alignment chart or whatever the way that D and D does. But no. you know, I mean, if you just if you say that my character is is just fucking crazy, and just it, you know is is on drugs and like just does not fucking think about their actions and just does things with no motivation just because they they're they're fucking off their shit. The GM can't stop you. Really? Right. He he's true chaotic neutral, like in character, chaotic neutral. Out of character, like chaotic evil. So there there's a, there is an alignment specifically for what I'm talking about, right? Would would be a cha bit, chaotic yeah. neutral. Okay. 
But I don't know that this game even has that shit. Right? No, it does not. Um, Henderson is just Henderson. Yeah, which is okay. Which is beautiful. Let's carry on. I promptly rolled up a second character and agreed with the GM that I should wait until a more appropriate time to join the scene than in the middle of a drive across town. They then decide to pull into a local bar with the Don's kid to help him get off his problem. My second character of the evening's name was Ronald. Ronald was a used car salesman coming off the tail end of a bad divorce in which his wife gained all their worldly possessions and then promptly killed herself and left it all to the new church she had found the Disciples of the Yellow King. At this point in time, he was playing darts. Unbeknownst to him, a cultist from that church just let loose a powerful entropy curse after the car that was stolen from them. A curse with a very specific target, the brake lines of the car coming in for a hard stop just outside. Ronald looked at the perfect game he was playing and felt genuine joy for the first time in weeks. Then he was ripped in half by a BMW coming through the brick wall behind him. <laughs> this was less than 10 minutes after the first death of the evening. Henderson gets out of the car, and the bartender with the mob connections immediately puts a gun in his face. What the bloody hell do you think you're doing? Trying to escort a young man to safety? Damn cultists must have cut the brakes. <laughs> The bartender then recognizes the Don's son and calls him over to see if he's all right. Danny, the boy, <laughs> is confused, but mostly unhurt. This saved Henderson's life, but the GM soundly refused to let me just take control of such a politically powerful character just to get back into the game quicker, so I started to roll up another. A cop looking into a lead in, in a weird house across town. A weird house connected to a cold case that his old friend Al asked about immediately before his mysterious death in the middle of a huge explosion. <laughs> a, a place the mob had just told Henderson and Will should have answers for some of the questions they had as a favor for saving their son. They get there after me and open the door to creep inside. I've already investigated the upstairs and found notes saying something about a lab in the basement. Henderson, in the meantime, had gone straight down on the logic of what the hell kind of evil cultist just fucks around in the living room when they have a creepy ass cellar to play with. <laughs> he finds an old summoning circle down there and decides to spit in its general direction, accidentally activating it <laughs> as he walks out the far door, finding nothing of interest in the room. Upon discovering that this other door leads outside, he circles back around into the house and winds up in the study with Will. Meanwhile, with my new lead pointing me at the basement, I run in, see the horrible thing taking shape, botch the fuck out of my save against crawl into the fetal position and cry while losing 2d10 sanity. Henderson, meanwhile, picks up a book off the shelf and flips it open to a random page. What the hell kind of gobbledygook is this anyway? How are you supposed to pronounce al ria al Cthulhu fatagin kikili far al is al akas far de He turns to Will, completely oblivious to the betentacled beast he just conjured into existence behind him, cocked eyebrow barely visible about above the rim of his sunglasses. What does that even mean? What's the point of wasting paper with this sort of nonsense? Will Having barely failed his sanity check, loses five points from his score and, po and points behind him, muttering something about a thing that should not be. Henderson chuckles and says how he's not going to fall for that one again. <laughs> last time he did the... I don't yeah, yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Last time he did, the person he was interrogating vis-a-vis -vis his lawn gnomes had her pimp beat the shit out of him and steal his wallet. So he leads Will to the kitchen leaving the monster to its own devices. In the kitchen, Henderson continues to be disappointed with the continuing lack of clues, while the professor is overjoyed to discover that the liquor cabinet was never emptied by the previous owners and helps himself to a bottle. In the uh, Then the local cultists, getting a report of Henderson's location, proceed to kick in the door to come kill him. Three of them are eaten by the thing Henderson summoned in the study, 
And while they're screaming, the two of them take a peek at the next room, and Henderson smashes all the alcohol and lights it off while they run out the back door. <laughs> the abomination in the basement with me does nothing of importance while I regain my wits and attempt to leave. I burst out the way I came, see the fire, and immediately have a second breakdown caused by a pre-existing phobia of fire, randomly rolled for, and then <laughs> die burning, screaming in pain and terror. Much like the cultists and the monsters. Meanwhile, Will is asking Henderson why his car only has the Credence Clearwater Revival playing ever. <laughs> it turns out that it's because the CD is jammed in there and the radio is broke. Henderson just never bothered to fix it because Credence is awesome. <laughs> I think that's from the Big Lebowski, actually. Is I know it? that he's driving around. There's this scene where the dude, you know, Jeff Bridges is driving around listening to Credence in his car. Mm. But I don't know about the fucking, yeah, the, the, the tape being broken there or whatever. The CD being jammed in there. <laughs> I think it was a fu an actual, like, a cassette tape, if I remember correctly, Murphysevic. It's been a while since I've seen it, so. Yeah. That's a great movie. It's one of those movies where, like, I feel like, you know, it, it it gets a lot of hate now because everybody liked it. It got it got too much love, and now everybody rebels against it because it's like right. It's like not cool to like it because it was cool to like it now. You know that type of a thing. Right, right. It's a shame because I think it's such a great movie. But anyway. Anyway. I I agree. Good movie. Great movie. Uh, it captured it captured the feeling of the time very very well. It it did right. I mean, I was a kid during that time, but you know, um. Yeah, it was just fucking it's everything. Everything about it for me just I, I don't I don't know. Like the, the acting was out of control. Fucking John Goodman was awesome. The soundtrack is fucking great for that movie. Mm -hmm. uh, just I don't know. It just had a vibe to it. You know, I just it didn't it didn't give it's it's like it's like if Kevin Smith made something good. <laughs> kind of because it had that uh, comedy of errors thing that the Coen brothers are so good at they're one of my I, I would say they're like my favorite directors pro probably like if I think about my favorite movies m most of them were directed by the by the Coen brothers but mm -hmm. like yeah they just uh they did such a great job the character of the of the dude was was somebody that I felt in in some in some ways you know like I felt like I could relate to him but I think like they might have tried to 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 do that I don't. I don't know. They they say it in the narration, how he's like an everyman or whatever. Even though he's he's definitely fucking not. Like, I don't know. It's, it's just such a it's such a cool movie to me. I love it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't get why people. Just like I, I always see. You know, I, like sometimes I'll see an article, where it's like, oh, yeah, it's the big Lebowski. We, it's time to talk about how the big Lebowski just isn't that great. And it's like, nah, I don't think we need to. No. It's I don't great. think we need to. It stands on its own. But like, it's... anyway. All right. All right. Um. Let me see. Where were we? We uh... were okay. So they ride away happily, listening to "Around the Bend" while I fucking died for the third time in the last hour. At this point, I was beginning to get a little pissy and break my promise to myself to not let the game get to me. I roll up another character, determined to do something of consequence in this session. I end up with a nasty street-fighting thug named Patrick. Somebody in a yellow robe gave Pat a pile of money and a picture of Henderson, asking him to make sure he disappeared. Now normally, Pat would think twice about accepting such a shady deal, since he preferred to rough people up, since it couldn't get you 25 to life. Now the somebody in the yellow robe is- that's- that's the fucking GM. Mm. Right? No, like it's- no, it, it, it's a cultist. No, well, the, be, be, being you know controlled by the GM. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, well, the, the, the GM the is. Like... I'm, I'm surprised we haven't seen more things on the part of the GM aggressively trying to stop this character from existing. Mm -hmm. You know, like it, it feels like he could be trying harder, but he's not. Right, right, mm -hmm. right, right. However, it was a lot of money, and I was getting to be very bitter about the whole dying every fucking session thing. So, Pat agreed to the job. I figured that this would end with me either killing Henderson or us getting into a scuffle and then Pat switching teams. Oh, how wrong I was. 
Turns out, Henderson wasn't a particularly tough fellow to find, since there's only one crazy old fucker with a mohawk and Hawaiian shirt running around reeking of cheap whiskey and porcelain. <laughs> <laughs> when Pat caught up with him, Henderson was taking a piss in an alleyway on the cardboard home of a hobo that just tried to mug him, now dead. <laughs> As he... What the fuck? So just in the interim, I feel like that that's Oh, the, see he oh kill, killing a hobo who tried to rob him might actually be the most sensible thing that he's done. Like that was a thing that was just happening in the background, like outside of the campaign. That that's a background thing that like, happened to Henderson. <laughs> it's just fucking skull. Like that's already a, a, an insane thing to do, but compared to everything else he's done, yeah. that makes that seem normal. Yeah. Yeah. As he finishes up, Pat taps him on the shoulder, and he turns. Now his name's Patrick, so... You Henderson? Oh, wait. Indeed I am. You get it, Patrick Star. Oh, yeah, go ahead and do that. That's yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see the SpongeBob gif I used when I tweeted about this stream? Yes. Apparently, like, there was a SpongeBob episode where they tweeted... They, they, tw yeah, they played D&D. &D. And... I had no idea. Yeah. That's great. It's just a gif from that episode, it looks like. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, you could read. I'm sorry. I just, I'm, yeah, try, yeah. I'm trying no, no, to okay, not, okay. like, fucking sidetrack you too much. Because there is a lot to mm. read here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we might not finish it, and that's okay. Yeah, it's fine. Whatever. Okay. Indeed I am. And then Pat's right hook hits him in the face and smashes his aviator shades into a useless mess of metal and glass shards. At which point, Henderson very calmly pulls it off his face and pulls out a spare pair of shades, puts them on, and comments, Well, that was kinda rude. <laughs> then Pat caught him with a left. Henderson then tosses the second useless pair of sunglasses aside, dons a third set, and then says, Now, son, I've only got one more pair on me, and I've got considerably, considerably, considerably less patience than that. What the bloody all living loving fuck hell are you doing? So he's got, I got good money for Oh go ahead. He's got four pairs of, of glass of sunglasses. Yeah. Yeah. I got good money from a man in yellow saying that you're a no good son of bitch who needs to be put down. <laughs> I, I can't keep doing that voice, Jesus. Yeah, it's great though. <laughs> it's good. At this, Henderson puts on a very surprised and concerned face. A man in yellow, you say? Son, I'm afraid there's been a very big, big mistake here. I've been lied to? <laughs> nah. You're pretty spot on, Henderson replies before shoot shooting out both my knees with his concealed handgun, followed by a pair to the balls. <laughs> but no man gets between me and me wee men. The, the, and then the, walks oh. out of the alleyway, uh. leaving me to bleed to death. And everyone at the table kind of looks shocked at the fact that Henderson just blatantly executed a PC, a player character, right there. <laughs> Fucking great. So, so wait a minute. I just figured out what we men mean. It's the gnomes. Yes, the the tiny men. This I was the first time I was like, what is we? Why is he saying we men? Like that entire sentence didn't make any sense to me. Now I finally get. He was talking about the gnomes. Oh, yeah, that's we so, as in little. That's so good. Yeah, I get. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, that's good. You want me to take over a bit since Patrick fucked your voice up? No, I'm fine. All right. Patrick wasn't... It was going to be tiring, but now he's gone. Yeah, he's dead now. I forgot okay. that he just died. Yeah, so that's actually the fourth uh, per character that... that fourth char fourth character death, yes. In, in, in like one night, this fucking guy mm -hmm. writing this has lost four characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, why are we ellipsing, chat? Ellipses? What's going on? Oh, I think Why? they're just saying I'm dumb for not realizing that by, oh, by, by, okay. by we we men that he was talking about the gnomes. <laughs> yeah, I just did, it didn't it didn't it didn't click, but now so, I get it. Okay. I, I I feel like sometimes you're really observant and sometimes you miss really obvious things and there's no pattern. No, no, there's there's many <laughs> many things wrong with my brain, man. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm yeah, just, I'm, just inhaled tea. I'm, I'm don't don't inhale tea. Don't don't smoke <laughs> don't smoke tea. 
Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, fucking just, like, sometimes the obvious things I just blind on in, in video games. Like, I'll look back at it, and I'll be like, wow, that, that really is amazing <laughs> that I didn't fucking see that, man. Oh my god, Holy as shit. I've been learning chess, that's just me every time. It's like, yeah, of course, of course that would happen, because that's the only thing that could happen for making this dumb move. Well, I, I, think, I think chess is a game where, yeah, you know, that, that, that is the game. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's the game. It it's is. like, don't miss the obvious things, you know? I mean, even... There's always, like, a move, right? Yeah. There's it, always a move. I will chalk it up to ADHD, Ellie. I, I think a lot of it is the fact that, um... Just, my brain is all over the place. It's like a fucking... It, it requires a lot of discipline to kind of stay on track with things sometimes. Because I'll be, you know, I'll be doing one thing and then... It's like we're good at... Like, hyper-focus sometimes, but I'm here doing a thing where you can't hyper-focus on, on anything because I'm... My, by the, by nature of streaming, your attention has to be divided. Right. You know what I'm saying? No, like, I, uh, one of my best friends has um, ADD? ADHD, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, he, like... He is one of the most intelligent people I know. When he sets his mind to something, like... It's in, it's insane, but he also like failed a bunch of classes in high school because he just he couldn't do it, and it's just like fuck. This man is too smart for this. He's yeah. too smart for this fate. Yeah, it might not even. Yeah, it's it's nothing to do with you know like intelligence levels, I guess, or it's nothing to do with fucking I don't I don't know IQ, whatever the fuck, or just knowing things. It's just about the fact that it, it feels like inside my brain, there's just a hummingbird that sees like 50 flowers it wants to suck at all times. Did, did you, you, you had to come up with something other than the obvious, right? What's that? Not dicks. Oh, no, not, not, it, not you, dicks. You see, you see 50 dicks and just all of them just... Yeah, you could look at it like that, too. It's like, I walked okay. into Ram Ranch, and there were so many dicks, I didn't know where to start. 18 naked cowboys in the showers at Ram, Ram Ranch. Ram Ranch. Well, I went with the, the hummingbird, because the, that that animal accurately depicts, like, the fucking experience of, of having this sometimes. Mm -hmm. No, I got you. Where it's really just like, oh, wait, wait but there's like eight things that I wanted to talk about, but I also have to do five dif different things that I'm doing right now, but I also want to do that while I'm doing that, but what about this? What about that? And then you get to a point where it's like executive uh, indecision or executive right. dysfunction where because there's so much of that happening, you get paralyzed and you end up doing nothing. Mm. It's fucking... It's, it's very hard to explain to somebody who doesn't experience it. And, and, you know, one of the struggles is like really having people in your life understand what, what, what it is that, that you're going through. I've, ex uh, it, I've experienced it. I don't I, I don't think that I have it, but I've experienced that kind of thing. And to think of that happening constantly is a nightmarish. I, I think I think there's like there's a, a spectrum to it. You know, I think you could be. Yeah, you know, I think you could have it in d d to degrees. You could suffer from elements of this, but um, there's very little patience for it. Um, unfortunately, from, from a lot of people, the, the people who don't get it, people who don't experience it um more often than not we'll just look at it and 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 just yeah they'll think of it, it's it's laziness or they'll think it's something else so they'll right. just um right it's like they don't understand it and so they try to assign like things to it there's very to little to, to try to make it more comfortable for them it's like because if someone doesn't understand something they often get uncomfortable yeah there's there's little patience out there for it in, in my experience right and, you know, if if somebody in your life tells you that they have ADHD or, or ADD and um, you you want that person like in your life to to a degree, um, you've got to really have patience and you've got to mm. you've got to like kind of be give them the benefit of the doubt with 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 things like that. And I, I think probably like educate yourself a little bit because otherwise, like you and this person ultimately aren't, aren't going to get along. Right. You know, but anyway, um, we got to keep reading this. I'm sorry. Yeah, let's get, it's okay. It's, you're fine. Yeah. Um, uh, okay.
We're actually, I think we're almost done with this part. Hmm. Oh, they, they talk to each other. Waffle House Millionaire chimes in. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, right immediately after this. Okay. So. Uh. I will admit to... F okay, so. Uh, everyone at the table kind of looks shocked at the fact that Henderson just blatantly executed a player character right there. I will admit to flipping my shit a bit. While the GM went to consult his notes, I confronted him. Why the fuck did you just kill me? What? You just fucking shot me dead. <laughs> I shot a random guy who threatened my life and started trying to beat the shit out of me in the middle of a crime scene where I totally just murdered a hobo? Yes. Yes, I did. What possible reason could I have to not shoot you? It's me, you cock! I've already died like three times today! That's metagaming. <laughs> he says that's metagaming. You're metagaming. <laughs> so good. I went to make oh, the call so for takeout. Good. Knowing I went to make the call for takeout, knowing that I would have hit him if I stayed. He's just on a fucking rampage. Mm-hmm. And at this point, he goes, like, he, he takes a break from the story to explain, Before anybody says anything, I know getting violently angry over a game is stupid. That's why I walked away before it got the better of me. Nobody in the group, except maybe the GM, was a that guy, but we all had a tendency or two that could have put us into that category. WHM has a thing about the rules and about characters that I'm pretty sure are signs of his OCD coming to the fore. It's a really mild case, so you wouldn't even know he had it if you didn't notice little things, like the fact that he never has the volume set for an odd number. If there are rules in place for a game, he expects them to be, to be followed as written. If someone modifies the rules for some reason, that's fine, as long as he knows in advance there's a change. The dice land as the dice land, and he tends to be very chill on the whole as long as you don't manage to piss him off. Me, I like being a team player. I honestly hate playing a multiplayer game if it means going against my friends. I think this quirk may have eventually rubbed off on WHM as far as Vidya are concerned, but I digress. So one of my sore spots is basically infighting. If two people start to have a fight, in character or out of character, it ruins the fun for me. I don't give a shit if the random kobolds we're beating up are having a bad day. I give no shits about some random guy in a server I keep sniping, but that guy I'm shooting isn't Dave, my friend who let me move in after I had a bad breakup. That kobold isn't Mike's new PC. Personally, I think this is where the line between that guy and the rest of us is drawn. We're all geeks and nerds. Given what gets posted on TG and 4chan at large on a daily basis, I think it's fair to say we're all assholes to some degree as well. We all have in us some quality or two that might be detestable. The difference between us and that guy is that we're trying to at least be acceptable, if not good. But now I've gotten off topic a bit. I opted to go for a quick drive to get pizza since it was a bit cheaper and we were taking a break anyway. WHM decides to go with me defeating the purpose of me trying to get away and clear my head. <laughs> On the way was probably the time where we actually became friends. You see, up until this point, we'd just been kind of hanging out in the same group, playing games and shit. But on this day, I don't know what prompted it, but I got angry, and I kind of yelled at him. He took it in stride, came back with a reasoned argument, and let the matter drop. On the way back, we bickered over stupid shit, but I think out of all the crazy shit I've seen and done with him, near-death experiences, epic games, LAN parties, late nights having to go help a friend, that time he talked down a jumper, this was the one that stuck with me the most. Partly because I'd never before seen anybody just let their guard down and be honest like that. I won't share what we talked about, except this. He actually bought Saint Anger. I bought Saint Anger. You bought Saint Anger? Yeah. Why? It wasn't good. Oh, my switch died. No! Fuck. It's fine. I didn't plug it in. That's fine. Uh, I could plug it in and try to come back. Podcast over. GG. Podcast ended. Um, If you want to plug it in and try to come back, that's cool. You can. Okay, um, 
why don't you go ahead and read their dialogue that, uh, between them? Because Waffle House Millionaire was still here and sort of like curating the story to make sure it was correct. And they have a little dialogue. Why don't you go ahead and read it while I get the charger? All right. So he says, I won't share what we talked about except this. He actually bought St. Anger. And yes, I bought St. Anger at the time and I listened to it and it was whatever. I don't know. I had a Metallica phase. What do you want? I was in the middle of my Metallica phase. Okay. Waffle House Millionaire says, For fuck's sake, are you ever going to let me live that down? That CD was garbage, and you know it. I didn't at the time. Metallica's pretty consistently awesome. How was I supposed to know that that was the album they were going to fuck up? It was two years before we even met. I already apologized for it. The other guy says, Make all the excuses you want, man. The truth's out there now. Now all the internets know you done goofed. Well, now the internet knows that I done goofed too. Just yeah, it wasn't a, it wasn't a terribly good album. I don't you know you know that's one of those things where it's like somebody out there has that as their favorite Metallica album. That's somebody's that's that's somebody's favorite album. Do you realize that? Like on ironically, that's somebody's favorite album. It's like how somebody out there on ironically has. Wear Back as their favorite animated movie. Type of a thing, you know? Like, so statistically... Got it. Somebody out there... Fred, I was just saying that statistically, somebody out there has as their favorite album, St. Anger. People are allowed to be wrong. <laughs> People are allowed to be wrong. Uh, do I have to open my gates again? Let's find out. Uh, yes. Uh, actually, the code no, should still work. No, no, you could, you should just be able to use the same code that I gave you before. Just make sure you don't, you don't tell anybody, or there's going to be a bunch of assholes running around while we try to have our podcast. To be fair, I feel like that also would be accurate for our streams together. What? Just have a bunch of random assholes running around? Yeah, just like th that's the chat, the representative. Yeah, but do you? I don't know if I want them physically in 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 my town, just fucking shit up, you know. Not without me oh, being yeah. me mentally and physically prepared for it. You know, I worked hard on this town. I don't know if you noticed. Yeah, I. You worked so hard on the studio. I like. I don't want. Like, I want to use it. Yeah, Damn that it. took that took like I'm say like forty minutes today to put to like to put everything take everything down that was in there. And then just find the right shit and, like, get it all set up. I still feel like there's probably things in the game that would be better in, in there. You uh -huh. know, like, desk mics, for example. Like, a little microphone that goes on your desk. Right. But you work with what you got. Oh, that's, yeah, that's exactly what I did. Uh, has Frank seen the shirt? You, you, you know what? That's, the store's closed now. Oh, is it? You know what? Yeah, don't worry about it, though. Wait, is it? The, the, yeah. Oh, the Able Sisters store. Yeah, yeah. Wait, don't come yet. No! I'm sorry. I already was coming. Yeah, you know what's dog shit? The fact that I can't wear that while it's in the Able, the Able Sisters store. Oh, really? Like, why can't I wear that while it's in the Able Sisters store? TurboTail says, I thought you got a copy. Yeah, but it's not here. Oh, it, it, if, you're, if your phone is open, then I can't join. Why didn't right. you take a copy? Jen, I thought I did take a copy. You can. You picked the swap out option when you put it up at the Able Sisters for some reason. That's bullshit that I don't have access to my own fucking shirt. Why don't I have access to my own shirt that I made? <laughs> you took the default pattern instead of throwing it out. Man, that really that really grinds my fucking gears. I wanted to it is bullshit, Porterhouse. It is It absolutely is bullshit. Vinehart says when you put it up. Oh yeah, so Buntime made the mistake of letting me go to her uh, her her island. 
And I totally just, like, the first thing I did was I just beelined for the Able Sisters and slapped that shit up in the store. So now all of her villagers are running around with the Come and Me Bro shirt. You didn't see this, Fred? You know, I feel like this is in your wheelhouse, man. Let me see if I could get you a, a picture of this. Okay, okay. Uh, you know, I'm just gonna link you the, the tweet. Oh, I'll just link you the, the tweet so you could get the whole gist of the, of the whole thing here. I don't know, maybe you saw this on Twitter and then decided to ignore it because, because you know, for obvious reasons. Oh, no, but... I did see this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was gonna have you put that shirt on. Um... What makes you think you could you could convince me? Oh, uh, I was just you know I was gonna just run it by you as a possibility. You don't have the option of, of wearing it right now, but um. Hey 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 Mike. Yeah, what's up? Hey Mike. Yeah. I want you to know something. Yeah. You are a. Damn it! I was going to drop a peach on the ground. Oh, but you can't drop peaches. No, you can't drop things on the ground. Where you're here. This game ruined a tender moment between me and Frank. God damn it. What? What? When did you decide I'm Frank? I didn't. That you you don't, do you remember how that started? How did it start? We were streaming together and then somebody wrote like a fucking like a really shitty like fanfic of like me and you like making out on a couch or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then and then just halfway through it inexplicably they because in the beginning they were calling you fred but then i get like they either forgot your name or it's a typo and started calling you frank <laughs> remember that? <laughs> you don't remember i i i didn't read through it all we we made this discovery i, I remember the moment like we, we skimmed through it while we were live and pointed this fact right. out now, I remember okay. laughing about the fact that he was calling you Frank, like, and you were laughing. You were laughing at it, too. You don't remember? I... Fuck, I remember now. Jesus. All right, so... Now that we're back, would you like to continue reading, uh, the story of Old Man Henderson? Yes, gladly. Okay, so I read the dialogue bit of the two... the two, uh, the two people speaking to each other about the St. Anger album. All right. Back to the story at hand. Okay. We get back to the table, and the GM has got some new stuff lined up. I decide to opt out of re-rolling and rejoining, even though we were only like halfway through the session, because I wasn't ready to have another character killed <laughs> off just yet. Will and Henderson bounce around trying to find a lead to work with for the whole revenge plot they were kinda working on. They ended up meeting up with Jimmy to try and talk his girlfriend out of being a cultist, which ended up fantastic. Jimmy basically agrees to go one of the go to one of the meetings if she promised to seriously have a chat with him afterwards about the whole joining a cult thing. She agreed, basically telling him that he'd totally change his mind once he saw what it was all about. Jimmy was a smart boy, and he called Henderson's cell phone for backup in case things went south. So, pretty soon, Henderson and Will are sitting outside the church on the curb, waiting. Henderson breaks the silence. Man. I fucking hate stakeouts. They aren't that bad. Last time I was on a stakeout, two of my friends got killed and your bar burnt down. Does this shit happen on a regular basis with you? Not causing it. Well, not usually. I remember I got arrested about a year ago for scaring a cook shitless. What? Why? I... Let me see. I told the motherfucker that I was allergic to olives. I get olives on my everything. I could have fucking died if I didn't check it out. That- oh, sorry. There's a silence. Then... Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's... Oh. You. No, that's you. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Fuck it. No, no, There's no, no. the best- Oh, oh, wait. No, yeah. I- I fucked up. My bad. I lost my place in the reading, sorry. Fuck it, there's a Best Buy in a video rental place around the corner. I vote we get one of those portable DVD things and a movie. Fuck yes. Shit. We're just here in case Jimmy calls us. Let's get biked and watch... Biked? Mm -hmm. Let's get baked <laughs> and watch something funny. So then we went... So they went and got a copy of Grandma's Boy, got high, and laughed their asses <laughs> off. Grandma's Boy. 
Wow. In public, outside a church they're supposed to be watching for cultists, they already know what Henderson looks like. Surprisingly, nothing comes of this until Jimmy calls them from inside the church. Apparently, they just called up some kind of demon and told it to eat his girlfriend and him as a sacrifice to their god. His girlfriend, shocked at the sudden change in tone from the companionable, welcoming air that was there before, suddenly realizes that cults aren't as awesome as she thought. <laughs> And that's when Henderson and Will run inside, guns drawn, Jimmy, wise man he is, grabs his girlfriend and ducks, while full auto shotgun spray kills every motherfucker in the room. They go outside and into the car, Henderson starts it up while Will keeps the arson streak alive and sets the building on fire. As they pull away, <laughs> Carrie, Jimmy's girlfriend, goes all my hero on them, and soon the two free teenagers are getting busy in the backseat. Will looks shocked, while Henderson lights the, lights the bong up and starts hotboxing while cranking up the stereo. <laughs> Which is when they passed a cop going in the opposite direction. To this day, I giggle to myself thinking about what that cop must have been thinking when he saw that. There's Henderson, driving the car, taking a hit off a bong the size of God. Next to him is a dude who looks like a slightly less fat Kevin Smith. How does Kevin Smith like, get brought up twice? I don't know. In you, one evening. You brought like up Kevin Smith fat first. Kevin Smith. Huh? You brought him up first. Now they're bringing him I up. I did. Yeah. And now the, now the story's bringing him up. Is a dude who looks like a slightly less fat Kevin Smith looking bored out the window. There's so much smoke inside that you'd think the <laughs> car's on fire. And there's a couple of people obviously fucking in the back seat. I'd like to think that he was thinking about his family or going to watch a hockey game at the bar with his friends. Or maybe finally asking the cute waitress out. I just, some part of me desperately wants to, wants to know why it took him two blocks to process what he just saw. Henderson just keeps going. Not a care in the world. Cop turns around and starts to follow him. Henderson keeps going. Cop turns on his lights. Henderson keeps going. <laughs> Sir, pull over the vehicle, the cop says into his loudspeaker. Henderson pulls into a drive through the cops walk up. The cop walks up halfway through an order for tacos and politely asks what the fuck he's doing. <laughs> Henderson replies with a hold on a sec gesture and finishes his order. <laughs> then he asks then he asks the cop if he wants anything. <laughs> That's great. The cop asks him to please step out of the car, sir. Up uh, uh yeah. Wait. Yeah, the cop asks him to please step out of the car, sir. Offers of a chalupa are denied. Henderson gets out of the car, a plume of smoke accompanying his exit. Jimmy and Carrie are kind of blushing and avoiding eye contact, mostly having recuperated. Will, having seen three cosmic horrors in the last day, killed a bunch of people and still coping with the loss of his bar, apparently has no fucks to give. He just sits there, high off his ass, listening to Fortunate Son. <laughs> The cop interrogates him as to why he didn't pull over, and Henderson <laughs> responds that was because he was colorblind, and that he didn't realize there was a cop behind him. The cop asks him why he smelled like weed, and Henderson replies that it was because he just smoked a huge fucking bowl, but it's cool <laughs> because he has one of those medical licenses. When Whoa. asked about the kids in the back seat, he stated confusion and asked what kids before looking back <laughs> and seeing Jimmy. It's great. Hey, Jimmy! When'd you get here? You came to pick us up. No shit. He turned <laughs> to the cop. Tell you what. Memory's the first thing to go. Followed right by the memory. So how can I help you, officer? After, re <laughs> After replaying the conversation a few more times, the cop made Will drive, and they left relatively unmolested with their tacos. See, he talked his way out of uh, an incident. Man, what a hero Henderson is. Holy shit. God damn. I fucking... I wish I could make a, a, a RPG character like 10% as cool as Henderson. You can't. That's why we're reading about it. <sighs> That's I'm gonna why take, this is a legend. I'll take part four for you. I've been reading a lot. Right, enjoy, sure, your, enjoy, your, enjoy your tea I, for a minute. Can I just say, I love the line, Tell you what, memory's the first thing to go. Followed Fo right by the memory. Followed by the memory. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, listen, when you see the Henderson dialogue, do the Henderson dialogue, okay? Mm-hmm. 
I think when I left off on the last story, it's part four. Our intrepid right. heroes had just gotten their hands on tacos and narrowly avoided getting arrested. Oh, actually, this is the last part. Oh. Well, the whole thing? Uh, of, of the whole thing. Yeah, we're two hours in. Well, this will take us another 40 minutes or so, oh, probably. Well, 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 we'll finish it then. All right. Let's do it. Let's finish this up. Henderson is formally introduced to Carrie at this point, and I decline the offer to take over her character to get back in the game. I already had a character in mind, and the session was almost over at this point anyway. Henderson, being the responsible adult that he is, takes the kids to Harry's. If you're old enough to kill cultists, you're good to drink. <laughs> he told them, and grabbed everyone a beer. We got most of the way into an elaborate The Big Lebowski reference, when Mike finally asks a question, in a tone of voice that suggested irritation. And this is actually, uh, this is actually you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the hell are you guys talking about? What? I mean, you guys are clearly having a laugh at my expense. I don't mind that, but I'm not getting the joke and it's pissing me off. Dude, Henderson is practically the dude from The Big Lebowski. That can't be accidental. It was. I've never seen the movie. <laughs> Seriously? What? I've never seen The Big Lebowski? What the fuck do you mean you've never seen it? Not sure how that can be misinterpreted. I think my uncle mentioned liking it in passing once. <laughs> Fucking really? That's great. The GM agreed to call the evening right there so we could work on the next part of the game while we dragged our fearless leader to watch what we thought was a fantastic movie. So at Harry's, they bump into my second-to-last character, Malcolm Reeves. Mal was a soldier who just got discharged from the military after a tour of duty sent him into a nest of monsters. He was diagnosed with schizophrenic hallucinations caused by PTSD and sent home. He overhears Henderson talking about cultists and deformed hell poodles, and asks if he can get involved. We move out of the bar as evening begins to set in, in various degrees of drunk. We start with the building Henderson exploded. Nothing. We go back to the remains of the church Henderson burned down. Nada. Same story with the old mansion and the cult me meeting we saved Carrie from. Oh, sorry. I, I was okay. I was busy looking at at the switch in my reactions. Uh, <laughs> fucking cultists! Henderson yelled, dismayed. Not one clue anywhere. Maybe if you didn't burn everything down, we'd have more to work with. Mouse suggests. We wage, wage, wage. We. <laughs> We wage a scorched earth sort of war here, kid, Henderson says darkly. But that can wait until we get a lead. Anyone have any ideas? Jimmy, buzz well on its way to wearing off, raises a hand. Uh, the internet? What the hell's an internet? <laughs> and then Henderson learns something new about the world. Seeing as how Carrie and Jimmy's parents wouldn't want a trio of random dudes showing up to use their computers, they do the next most logical thing. Break into the library and use the public access lines. Sadly, Google had zero useful results under Goram Poodle Fukin Cultists. <laughs> Disciples of the Yellow King, as Jimmy pointed out, and then corrected Henderson's spelling had a list of locations and possible meeting times for various groups across the city. There were ten unmolested locations, and several of them were having meetings this very night. Clearly, the GM was wanting us to get back to investigating. <laughs> Henderson, instead, bought enough gasoline to make about 50 Molotovs. <laughs> <laughs> and we burned every one of those motherfuckers down that evening before dropping off the kids at home for a good night's sleep. <laughs> Mal buys the first round as we watch the news, seeing our exploits all over TV. We all got a good laugh when the cops apparently failed their assorted checks, tests, and investigations. Since we players decided as a group that going to confront possible suspects meant 
have no fucking clue what's up, and we're going to go arrest Jeff Bridges, Kevin Smith, and Marshall Mathers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Triumphantly, we return home for the evening, and we all catch the news the next morning. Apparently, people are appalled by the hate crimes against this one religious group in the community, and they send their prayers with them. The head of the local cultists thanked the community for their concern and said that he had the permission of the local government to gather together and pray for the souls of their departed at a local high school gym. In retrospect, the GM telling us that every living cultist of Haster would be gathered into one convenient location should have been a hint that it was a trap. Like one big enough to be visible from space. This is when Henderson had a cunning plan. <laughs> he was going to go there and talk to the head cultist guy. I tell, him, <laughs> I tell him that it's a fantastic plan. Since Will already shared the summoning of the demon thing Henderson accidentally accomplished with him. So the new plan, of which Henderson was only vaguely aware, was that Jimmy was going to help the deacon set up a slideshow thing for all of the words of the prayer that he was going to lead. Henderson asked what the significance lawn gnomes had in their worship. The deacon, after deducing that he wasn't in fact being mocked, explained that the church was rather neutral on the topic of lawn gnomes. <laughs> Henderson then kept chasing the line as hard as he could, asking about things like human gnome relations. Whether, whether the gnomes had souls, whether said souled gnomes could theoretically be used as sacrifices to Satan. The deacon then, and, and I'm quoting the GM here, in the only good line he had the entire game, gave Henderson a look. A look that can only be summed up as, dude, I fucked a Shoggoth and you're creeping me out. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy then led Henderson away from the fracas. After he completed his secret mission of changing one of the slides about a third of the way through the show. That evening, the cultists prayed to Haster. They asked for guidance and protection. They asked that their dead be avenged. They asked that they be allowed to continue serving. Or at least, that was the intent. One of the slides had been changed to say something more like, Alwia al Cthulhu Fetagen. Kikili far is asarkas faldepwa. One horrible tentacled monstrosity per member saying the prayers out loud. The GM assumed that we would crash the show. We chose instead to barricade the doors and leave. <laughs> After the horrors had ripped apart the cultists, they turned on each other. Soon the hall was left with only the dead and dying while some stone-cold motherfuckers shot pool across town. <laughs> <laughs> However, we didn't account for one thing. Hoster wasn't the only game in town, and a high priest of Cthulhu felt a hundred, mo felt a hundred monsters being called into the world in his master's name. He investigates and finds the scene of the crime, and then looks into the earlier summoning performed by Henderson. Gravely insulted by the turn of affairs, he uses a sympathetic binding, using what little remained of the corpse, to a sick of, to sick a pair of hellhounds on Henderson, before returning to his meditations. When hey Mike, yeah, I can really sympathize th with them. Those hellhounds really are a bitch. Oh, cause bitch is another word for a female dog. Hold on. I'll, I'll be honest, the joke was really just me wanting to use an expression. Um, hold on a minute. <clears throat> uh, it's this one. There we go. Okay. Sorry that took so long <laughs> for me to find that. Okay. When they catch up to him, Will's already gone home. The kids are sleeping. And Henderson's going for a walk with Malcolm. We're in the park not far from his house. About to part ways when we hear a horrible snarling noise. Pistols drawn, we get a lucky shot off and kill one of them. While the second leaps onto Henderson's face. He... He throws it off. 
and dodges its second coming. Guess who gets a crit to the fucking throat? Fucking guess. Yes, I'm still bitter that no character other than Simon survived across multiple sessions. <laughs> so, as the monster kills me, Henderson manages a few solid kicks into it. The summoner, having detected a kill from his beasts, dismissed the survivor, assuming that he got the kill he desired. So that's what, his, his fifth dead character? Uh, this is another session, I think. This is his sixth. His sixth dead character. Okay. Yeah. Henderson, uh, uh, okay, no, I found my place. Henderson called the cops, and Mal was given a small but tasteful funeral at the military's expense. <laughs> the official police reports read it off as a mauling by some dogs that apparently escaped heavily wounded. The surviving party members raised the glass in his name, while you and I are going to diverge from the sad scene. That night, on the way home, I had a terrible premonition. I now wonder, looking back, if this was the same fey mood that took Mike the evening he created Henderson. I lurked forums. I googled strategies. I shared small snippets of my sob story online while I accumulated knowledge. Henderson was born of madness and a man's hatred towards blind antagonism. I, on the other hand, turned my eyes towards a magic more solid, practiced, dependable, evil. I <laughs> delved into deliberate munchkinism for one express purpose, the creation of Simon Breckenridge, British spy. I knew setting out that I would never curb Henderson's madness. I could never hope to match it either. I therefore built Henderson's exact opposite, competent, sane, cunning. His karmic balance, the yin to his yang, his fucking soulmate in plot annihilation. The perfect support character, when utilized properly, a well-made slash played support character is a fucking force multiplier for team effectiveness. Since Henderson was already wrecking the campaign harder than anything I could possibly design, I chose to co-opt Mike's efforts and make the, the Henderson situation exponentially worse. <laughs> Since I'd been absent for longer than intended from the whole director's cut thing I've been doing, I'm gonna power through the rest of the story tonight. So excuse me while I slip into something a bit more comfortable and grab a snack. And now Waffle House Millionaire actually responds, Simon was intentional? That explains so much. And the other guy says, Man, I can't make shit up off like the cuff like you can. Simon was like a week's effort. I skipped a couple of classes to perfect my technique. Okay. Switching away from the antics of Henderson for a little while, we take the action to London. Most spies who try James Bond-level bullshit get killed. They get lost or abandoned by their own country. Most spies are not Simon Breckenridge. Due to careful manipulation of events behind the scenes, he managed to close multiple gaps in security, sleep with most of the attractive ladies in town, and pass all the blame to other people. He had a distinguished career behind him and retired at age 35 with enough embezzled government funds to have him tried for treason. Less than a week later, without his spy network in place, his country house is destroyed and he goes back to work trying to figure out who killed his wife. His one lead skips town on a boat, so he goes to America with only one goal in mind, revenge. He knows that he'll have to use local conditions to his advantage since he going in blind without a penny to his name. After all, the Crown could hardly be caught funding a covert operation stateside. I track the yacht and find out where it intends to make landfall. I send a wire back home and discover that it's an influential member of a group known as the Disciples of the Yellow King. Looking around, it's not exactly hard to figure out why he might be interested in this town. Someone apparently declared war on his fucking religion. <laughs> I decide that finding the group responsible for this would be a wise move, since the enemy of my enemy would make an excellent disposable asset for the given value of friend. Deciding to get up bright and early the next day to search it out, I retire to a pub near my quaint hotel room, intending to sample the local fare. As I walk into Harry's pub, I'm greeted by a pair of people in the midst of a heated argument. I'm telling you, Will. This sort of degenerate activity is what's wrong with this country today. 
You're fucking crazy, Henderson. Each generation has its thing. You guys had Woodstock. This is just the new thing. Come on. We all know those punks on TV are talentless hacks. The real masters of the craft are dead and gone. I guess that's true enough, assuming you give proper credit to the proper men. Will, there's no fucking way in any universe that Tupac was better than Biggie. <laughs> Let's get a second opinion. Will responds before pointing to Simon. You there, new guy. Do you want to be Simon or, uh, or should I be uh, Simon? Well, I mean, if I'm Henderson, you have to be Simon. Okay. Yes. Tupac or Biggie? For what, president? I'd rather vote for someone with a sense of pizzazz. What's Liberace doing these days? Henderson smiles. I think I like this guy. Sup, Limey. What, bring, what brings you across the pond? I'm a secret agent for the Crown. I came here to reenact a James Bond movie and get thrown out under an assumed name. Given your hilariously liberal gun laws, that should take most of my holiday. Which Bond? Connery, the only proper one. Simon notes a hint of distaste in his voice. Nice. Henderson looks at the TV. Hey, they're talking about us again. Your church? Simon asks, taking mental notes. <laughs> uh, victims of jihad. Will responds, taking a sip of beer. Demon summoning cultist bastards. Stole my gnomes too? Why do you reckon they did that anyway? Will asks, he... turning to his compatriot. Nearest I can guess. Some sort of ritual sacrifice. Henderson responds. <laughs> I, I, I should have just kept going. By the way, that taxidermist ever finished stuffing that poodle? I figure I can use him to keep away the kids on Halloween. <laughs> Simon finishes his mental assessment. These morons will make for excellent cannon fodder. Gentlemen, a proposition. He then explains the yacht situation to the two of them, while Henderson takes a call from Jimmy. He then laughs. Can you boys handle getting some parachutes and some speakers for a rock concert? I just had the best plan ever. What sort of plan is this? Oh no, that, that was asks. Henderson that yep. said that. Whoops, yep. fuck. Do you want to read it over in the Henderson voice? Can you boys handle getting some parachutes and some speakers for a rock concert? I just had the best plan ever. What sort of plan is this? Will asks, watching Henderson intently. The best one ever. Come on. When have I ever lied to you? Refusing to explain further, he goes and leaves in his Buick to unknown destinations. Will lets out a sigh. I know where we could grab some speakers. You think you could get some parachutes? I think I can manage. We meet back up here tomorrow. So, while we went off to do some very mundane things, Henderson went to the local Air Force base. He told the man at the gate that he was a veteran needing to see a doctor, and then drove off to where the vehicles are kept. Since the GM had no idea how base security was supposed to work, he pretty much just walked up to a cargo chopper, going through pre-flight checks and punched out the pilot. Yeah. After hooking up the Buick, he flew across town to an abandoned warehouse and parked the chopper before going home. There really isn't anything more to that story. Apparently, these were the worst MPs in the history of our armed forces. We all come back to the bar, and Simon informs the group that the yacht will arrive in two days' time. Henderson and Jimmy rig up a thing that would let them control the various light charges and speakers from a cheap laptop, while Simon reacquainted himself with the controls of a helicopter. The theft and dropping of the yacht clearly happen at this point. So I'm not going to bother reposting that part of the tale here. My you know what? I I'm going to go up and I'm going to read Waffle House Millionaire's recounting of the event. Okay. Sounds good. I will stay at this point. And it's quite short. Point. Okay. Old Man Henderson, with his erstwhile companion, Jimmy the Jock, and his friends William Brocklaw, a once humble bartender, uh, the now dead detectives player, Old Man Henderson, burned down his bar on accident and blamed it on the cultists, one bluff check later and he's in the posse, and Simon Breckenridge, British spy, the professor's player, now six characters in, and yes, there were more <laughs> or less all killed by Old Man Henderson. <laughs> Old Man Henderson had discovered that there was not one cult to the Elder Gods, but several. 
This complicated his search for his gnomes slash crusade. He decided to enlist help in making the problem solve itself. Using his contacts, Simon discovered that an influential cultist of Hostur was coming to town to try and figure out how an avatar of his god was killed. Uh, he also located the exact dock on which he would be landing his boat. Jimmy, meanwhile, discovered the home of the head of the local Cthulhu cults was, a pent was at a penthouse su suite downtown. A plan was hatched. Old Man Henderson used all of his cunning to steal a military cargo helicopter, read, sure you can the pilot and flew off, and hid it in an abandoned warehouse. Jimmy and Will set up a very expensive surround sound speaker system at the docks, while Simon made and planted a lot of smoke bombs. That night, the yacht pulled in, and we made our move. Right as Simon maneuvered the helicopter over the docks, we set off the smoke bombs and activated the speakers. On one side, a 50-piece marching band played God Save the Queen at max volume, and on the other, the audio from the beach scene from Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> Imagine for a moment what being on the dock would have been like. Utter fucking chaos. <laughs> I jumped down from the helicopter onto the boat and rigged it to lift out of there. During the course of which, I ran into the cultist guy and Ninja kicked him in the head, knocking him th This is Henderson speaking, by the way, Henderson's character. <laughs> I ran into the cultist guy and Ninja kicked him in the head, knocking him tail over tea kettle and off the boat. I later learned that he broke his neck in the fall. <laughs> Damned convenient, otherwise he might have been able to ID me. We then lifted the boat out of there, switched to our secondary audio on all sides. My heart will go on from Celine Dion. I was in a <laughs> vengeful mood, gnome-stealing bastards. So when the cultists finally got the smoke to clear, their yacht was gone, their leader dead, and Celine Dion was stuck in their heads. Not the best of days. Then we went across town in a stolen military cargo chopper, carrying a 40-foot yacht and parked the helicopter above the penthouse with the yacht about 80 feet above it. <laughs> then we cut the line, jumped out with our parachutes, and watched the yacht ruin a dinner party while placing bets on whether the military <laughs> would save the chopper, blow it up, or if it would just hover there until it ran out of fuel. So they just dropped the yacht onto the penthouse? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the helicopter? So stupid. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fucking great. Oh wow! Oh, the yacht drop—that's legendary. I get—I get this now. I get why this is such a piece of like internet history now. Y yes. So we don't know when and this then, took place. Uh, we're not sure. No. Uh, the recounting of this happened in late 2012. Okay. This this could November. be th November specifically. This could be like animated. Yeah, a game about it, Eldritch Horror, Dra Dragovian Lancer. It's it's I, important I to remember that. Yeah, that this is a fucking tabletop game about Eldritch Horror. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many of you were here from the beginning, but this has just been a fucking awesome ride. Mm -hmm. The original I... posts were from 2010. Uh, so 2010, but these Dark are labeled Cole 2012. Uh, Twitch D wants to know when Empress Teresa comes in. Yeah, that has a little <laughs> bit of an Empress Teresa flavor to it. You know, dropping a yacht onto a building to, to kill somebody. That, yeah. That, that does sound like an Empress. I was surprised you, it wasn't a giant bag of Coke bottles. You, you, using a, a helicopter to drop a yacht onto a building? Yeah, that's that's like something that what's the the, the author whose name I don't remember? Paul what? No, that's Paul Fodier. That's com se semenology. I almost called the book comology. <laughs> uh, you're thinking of um, Norman Bouton. No Norman Bouton, yeah. Yeah, that, that's that's like something he would put into into one of his books, like on ironically, and like have it, but believing it's going to be taken totally seriously. It, it might actually be Boutine. I'm not sure. Um, all right. So, do you want to get back um, to the actual? Well, ac actually, um, actually, Waffle House. Uh, Mike has a note about this. Mm -hmm. I totally expected more resistance. I planned that shit out like a shadow run style attack, and then nothing happened. I just kind of walked in and jacked the chopper. Hilariously, I had no fly a chopper related skills, even in the backstory. GM just assumed it was there and I went. I fully expected to crash that thing in a field running from like the entire military. It sounds to me like the GM just fucking gave up. <laughs> he just he, gave he up. He did. No, like th this is like the GM just went full nihilist at this, at point. this point. Like he just doesn't care anymore. 
Yeah. I, I fully expected to crash it into a field. <laughs> into a field. Just think about it. That he was so good at bluffing that the GM gave up. Right, because the GM could have just been like, okay, well, your does your character know how to fly a fucking helicopter? You know, and stopped uh -huh. him right there. But yeah. you know, that was part of the reason why the 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 guy made a three hundred page backstory. Because he could just be like, yeah, dude, he knows how to fly a helicopter, here you go. And then just fucking, like, flopped it onto the table in front of him. Just threw it down on the table in front of him and be like, look for it. Uh -huh. He totally knows how to fly a helicopter. It's right It's right in there. For not wanting I don't to metagame. <laughs> I don't remember what page for it not, is. For, for not wanting to metagame, there's a lot of metagaming going on in here. Yeah, there's a little bit of uh, a, a hypocrisy with that, I think. Not to mention the fact uh, that he ch went he and changed the backstory. I, wh where does it become relevant that the guy speaks fluent Portuguese? I was waiting for that. I don't know if it does. It just doesn't. <laughs> it just doesn't. It's in the German section. I don't speak German. Well, get fucking get to Google Translate, bitch. <laughs> Shall I take us home? Yes. Go ahead. All right. At this point in the game... Having dropped the yacht, we are under no illusions as to what was going to happen next. The GM gave up the investigative undertones. We gave up on the disguising our war. I don't know why, but the GM refused to give us a cop-out. He didn't want to just rage quit and go, rocks fall, everyone dies. The session ended with us dropping a yacht, and we all walked out of there fully expecting open warfare when we returned to the table. <laughs> a week later, we met for the last time as a group after months of weekly games. It took Henderson about three weeks to completely destroy any semblance to a plot or long-term goal. All that mattered <laughs> at this point was that our deaths were long, glorious, and brutal. <laughs> Ironically, it was the first time we all arrived at the table with the same expectations and enthusiasm. Mike wanted to see Henderson die, and the GM wanted to kill him. <laughs> I wanted Simon to draw it out as long as possible, John wanted to see Will continue to give zero fucks. In a way, we all succeeded in our respective goals. The game picks up about three days after the dropping of the yacht. The remaining cultists begin to kill each other in open warfare, and the police and federal investigators are all flipping their shit over the blatant wizardry happening. <laughs> In the midst of it all, it's just out in the open now. It's just, yeah, it's just fucking mayhem. Mm -hmm. In the midst of it all, we're hitting high priority targets and wreaking as much havoc as possible. The Buick is sacrificed as a car bomb to wipe out a police station filled with shoggoths. <laughs> we manage to briefly steal a tank from the National Guard and drive right through a bunch of zombies in a shopping mall. Henderson updates his outfit, swapping the Hawaiian shirt for a leather jacket the back of which is emblazoned with a gnome wearing aviators and throwing up the horns. <laughs> That's great. He also <laughs> dons a regular pair of gray cargo pants, since he would have more pockets then. Simon put on a tuxedo and refused to take it off, while Will donned a flogging Molly t-shirt and a utila kilt. <laughs> Jimmy and Carrie, sadly, couldn't update their costumes. Their players were pulled out of the game at this point by Jim's parents in the real world since they insisted on dragging them to some movie. We decided that meant that Henderson made Jimmy get the hell out of Dodge, commanding him to continue the good fight if it ever came to that. We went back to the abandoned hockey stadium we were using as a base and loaded him up so that he'd get out safe and then dropped him near a military evac zone where he met his family. We raided an Applebee's to get some food supplies, and then hit up a hardware store along the way. On the way back, we found out the bad guys have realized we're the cause of all their problems, and were about to launch a coordinated strike against us. They've reached the military line between us and them, and start to pour after us like a black sea of unthinkable horrors. Along the way, they started to reanimate the dead and dying of both sides to join their charge. We managed to stay a half step ahead all the way back home, occasionally taking a detour through a place like an abandoned shopping mall or the home and garden center at Lowe's. We get back, and then Henderson lifts up a gnome from the back of the truck. He smiles, and then sets it back down before turning to us. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> and with that... He made his way to the rink. 
We all know then that it was a last stand scenario, and we started barricading the doors. We managed to get three of the four entrances almost unbeatable, but the fourth one was being broken open when Will and I got to it. Simon told him to go and make sure he took as many with him as he could before walking into the mass to rejoin his wife. <laughs> Will stole a Zamboni out of the storage and set a new high score while running over zombies and throwing ammo, ammo and such to Henderson. When he died, they were forced to go over the machine he left to get onto the ice, where Henderson was waiting for them. He managed to kill a shitload of them, but then he saw they managed to get rid of Will's impromptu barricade. As if on cue, all three of the still-locked entrances exploded open, and a horde seemingly without number comes in. Henderson smiled and called Hastur forward into the world and set the timers. As Hastur stepped forward, he got a rather unusual greeting. Oh, Canada. Our home and native land. <laughs> the king in yellow pauses while Mike apparently hits the limit of the internal clock he's been ticking off in his head. All right. We win. What? What? Oh, yeah, good. The charges go off. I set them for 15 seconds. I needed to make sure he had enough time to arrive, but not enough time to actually arrive. What? He then broke it down and explained little pieces of information gleaned from investigative portions of the game, meticulous notes from months prior. Together, they painted a very obscure bit of information regarding the nature of the gods in this setting. But, but that's... that's... you bastard! The GM accused dramatically, standing up and pointing. You only noticed. You only just now noticed. Mike returned, politely baffled. The GM then performed the first and only table flip I've ever seen in my years of gaming, before leaving in a huff. After a few moments of awkward silence, I realized that for all the bullshit, it wasn't really a satisfying ending. I'm not sure what drove me to do it, but I stood up. I picked up the table, and I moved to the now vacant GM seat. All right, so let's take a break for a second. He, the, the GM walked out. He flipped the fucking table and walked the out. The GM flipped the table and walked out. Now, the reason he was angry was because of why. I'm, that's, a fuck, that's the part I'm, I'm confused about. What, what did he do? What did Henderson do? Henderson had discovered that if Hastur was still in the process of coming into the physical world... Yes. But wasn't quite all the way there. If he was killed at that, like, he could be killed at that moment. Okay. Where he was, like, still coming into the world. Okay. Yeah. And that was the thing that, like, how did he find that out? Just from paying attention from to the DM's campaign? Just paying attention. That's all it took. When did the, the GM even. Did, did, did he mean for them to even have that information apparently not but but mike picked it up so he fucking kind of i don't even know how to explain it he figured out like a like a kind of a a thing or or or, or what's the fucking word like a, he, lo he a loophole a weak moment where yeah, he found he he knew that it could be exploited Yes. Basically. It's not, really, it's not really a loophole as much as, like, a purposeful part of, like, the, the lore of the Elder Gods. So how is it that the GM... I mean, the GM had to give them the opportunity to win, right? This like, GM had a vendetta. Remember, this is a shit GM. He's yeah. not there for his players to have fun. Right. He wants to show off this cool story that he put together, and nobody is going to ruin it. He's inserting his fetish fuel character with two katanas to do badass things. Like, there are GMs like this who will create storylines, um, and then rather than having the characters be an integral part of the story, they're mostly just there to witness the story that the GM has written. Right. For these GMs, the whole thing is just a J.O. fest, like a fucking self-masturbatory, like, look, everybody, look at all the cool shit I came up with mm -hmm. type of a fucking thing. Right. And they're watching his characters do it. It's a very special kind. Like, 
someone in chat saying it's railroading this is worse than railroading this is like railroading is saying the char the player characters are supposed to do this and but in this case the player characters are just like making room for the npcs to do cool things it's beyond railroading so mike he picked up on a tiny a tiny little thing that maybe the gm did, didn't think was exploitable and fucking exploited it and it was the type of thing where the gm couldn't 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 be like no that can't happen because it was something that he himself had already established was a thing like months ago mm -hmm. so he can't he can't just do that right right okay now See, okay. this is why as a gm i'll have a vague plot planned out but i'll make each session week by week mm -hmm. that so that way the player characters have a lot of say in what happens right you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'll, I'll have the universe planned out, the characters will be there, the important bits will be there, but every session is planned out the week that it happens. Darkly... So that I can incorporate, like, things that the player characters did and can even alter the storyline as it goes. Right, right. That's the, w that's the way I think you have to, to do this if you're going to do it effectively, right? But some GMs like to plan out every, every single fucking like, thing and then just, yeah. Like, they write a magnum opus. And then they say, all right, now you get to experience it how I choose. R right, right. It's, that's that's it's, railroading. It just beats the point. That's railroading because then he just funnels the fucking players into the experience that he wants them to have. Right. But, but this was an especially egregious case where the player characters weren't even the ones doing the cool things. Right. At the very least, you're supposed to be the player characters doing cool things. But... Uh Darkly Quill says, for further details, what he found out is that calling Hoster's name three times will summon him. But if the only one, but only if the one saying it is his truest foe at the time. Yeah, let, let's keep reading because this okay. comes up. Okay, yeah. good. All right, all right, uh, go ahead, sorry. Okay. He moved into the so, now vacant yeah, GM I, seat. I moved to the now vacant GM seat. Henderson came to a few moments later, most of his body crushed in rubble. A few feet away, he notices another figure. So. He wheezes while reaching into his coat with his one good arm, pulling out a joint he stashed away for future use. <laughs> I'm dying, the form replies, his voice weak. I must commend you, human. I did not think you capable of such a task. Yeah. <coughs> you seem the type to know a lot. Something I learned early in life that no one expects a sucker punch from someone they underestimate. He then lights his slip with a smile. True, the form responds. You know, I've been following you. You know, I never really took your gnomes. Fuck. Really? <laughs> well, now I feel like I might have overreacted a bit. He says with a cough. <laughs> he then passes the blunt to Hostur, who after only a moment's hesitation, accepts. <laughs> you apparently gave them up for a charity auction, he informs him. You know, I figured out everything but one little detail. Mind if I ask you a question? Shoot. Is Henderson your first or last name? Man, I've got no fucking idea. <laughs> That's Laughing, great. the man and the mad god died together moments later. <laughs> Henderson's body was dragged from the rubble two days afterward, and only Jimmy and Carrie <laughs> and some old preacher man cared enough to attend his funeral. Oh, I fucking love this. Will was buried nearby, since they were apparently friends in life, and he didn't have much left in the world after his bar burnt down. Simon was quietly retrieved by his son and put to rest near his wife's grave a week later. Jimmy and Carrie managed to get into a nice college together since the insurance from Henderson's life and homeowner's insurance policies, as well as the money coming in from liquidating Will's assets, gave them a nice head start on life. Their story didn't quite end there, but I'll let that shit slide for now, since I know you guys only care about one epilogue. 
Henderson opened his eyes, fighting off a migraine God only knows how long later. He forces himself to his feet and squints around at the dark, at the blank desert horizon. He looks at the mesas in the distance and the endless sands in every direction. Well, I'm either in hell or Utah. He lets out a deep sigh, realizing he's out of cigarettes. Utah, knowing my look. He notices a town in the distance and, uh, and have no better idea on what to do next. He begins to wander in its direction. Man, that better not be a fucking mirage. And that's it. That's it. That is the story of Old Man Henderson. That's goddamn beautiful. Oh my god, that's yeah, beautiful. Yeah, the trick is that Henderson had managed to become Hostur's gr like, greatest enemy. And if Hostur's greatest enemy says his name thrice, and it calls him into existence and makes him vulnerable. That's how it works. And the, the DM himself yeah. had established that. Yes. Clap. Oh, that was fucking beautiful. Fred, thank you so much for that. Thank you for bringing this joy into into our lives right now. This I was really, I really thought you would enjoy it. This was something that I think we all really needed right now. You know. Um, but but God damn it, if it doesn't make me want to play a fucking like an R a tabletop RPG, man. I know, right? God damn it, if it doesn't do that, man. it's just it it reminds me of all the things that just well, again the couple of times where I did play these types of games, you know. Uh, what was really fun about it. Like, this really encapsulates... Like, I feel like a lot of people don't get it. They don't get what makes tabletop games so much fun. They just see, like, a bunch of sweaty nerds, like, just fucking with pizza grease all over their fucking faces and shit. You know, sitting in the basement, like, being nerdy. You know, rolling dice and stuff like that. But really, the, the, the fun of it, to me, is just... Yeah, the, 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 the stories, the making shit up, the fucking... You know, coming up... Kind of just... Be, being a dick... I think a lot of the cum, the lot of the cum, you know, a lot of the fun, it just comes from being a dick. Like I'm reminded again of that story that I told you earlier. Like just the idea that any, literally anything could be possible provided that you're with the right people. You know, I mean, you could make it ridiculous, you mm -hmm. could make it hilarious, you could just, you could just fucking do literally anything. I mean, that that's the magic of the fucking, you know, the tabletop RPG experience. It's a thing that oh, I yeah, wish. I love it. I wish I was able to do more of it in my life, you know? Mm -hmm. It's one of those things that I just... I, I knew I would enjoy, but I just never really got got to do it that often. You know, and the opportunities that I had to do it, just, you know, they were few and far between. Mm -hmm. Would you ever be open to maybe doing one? I know you're a busy guy and you got a lot of shit going on, but maybe one day... In the future, the nondescript future, when maybe you don't have as much going on somehow, I don't know. Would you consider it? I, I'm thinking about it. Right now, I like I have a number of people, a couple of them involved with Emperor TTS that I've got on board to record um, some sessions, potentially. You're going to do one? Okay. That's All right. Yeah, I, but, as, but I might do a more casual one. Then again, I... The problem with GMing for tabletop stuff is I can't do casual. I always just go really hard. Hmm. How do you mean? What's the difference? I, I just, like, plan out really... Like, I end up wanting to tell a big story, and I want to, like, make it cool, so I take a bunch of time, yada yada. Like, like I, we I said just, earlier, you go hard. I go hard, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Only you know where to stop yourself and say, like, okay, this has now officially exited the... the the casual territory and is now into oh my god this is a this is a, a a major major effort undertaking category you know it's it, it's mostly just i guess it doesn't really take that long a lot of it is just managing my time being an adult is hard man yeah 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 i imagine it is i imagine it is i thank god that i'm still not there so i have you know i've pl plenty of time before i have to you know be in that place Oh, and I'm mm -hmm. just grateful for that. I'm not jealous of you be being an adult, you know? <laughs> you 
it seems like a lot of lot of work and a lot of stress man i mean good good luck to you he, how many years younger than me are you uh that I, I i like keeping my age under wraps i like seeing people guess i'm curious how old do people think i am i believe that you're younger than me i i believe they, they know how old i am so that fucks you up a little bit if it's true if it's true because i'm actually not sure i, I don't remember 70 they got it 70 nailed it <laughs> 42 which is exactly how old um stewie uh says that peter griffin is when they ask him how old he thinks daddy is when they have stewie griffin on, on an episode of kids say the darndest things uh remember that chat remember that classic family guy episode remember that remember that do you remember? Cole Balsh turned 42 last Thursday. Hap. 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 Uh, but yeah, I'm not an adult. That's the point of that. Um, anyway. Anyway. I thank you so much for letting me share this with you and everyone in chat. Thank you for uh, doing it, man. Uh, you know we're having uh, such a hard time right now. It's 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 was just, this was a very nice distraction for me, and I think for everybody here. Uh, just you know, just fucking everything sucks. To put it simply, everything fucking sucks, and we need um, we need some we need some laughs, man. And you really brought some laughs into our lives with this tonight. So thank you for coming by, Frank. I mean, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, uh, it was a good time. Thank, thanks for having me on every so often. It's really nice, dude. It's my pleasure, and uh, you get it's, it's nice to have uh, just, like stream with somebody else to just give my voice a break some nights, you know. So that's a great thing. Uh, I'm glad you like the podcast studio. I spent a lot of time on it. It's so good, dude. It's pretty you, sweet, right? You like you absolutely nailed it. Yeah. Look, oh, look, he's doing the thing. He's doing the thing. Look, he's got the flowers. The thing. Look at the thing. Oh, that's how much he likes it, chat. I was very dapper in that Argyle sweater as well. It's good, right? It is, I, I love this outfit. It's very good. Got the nice shoes and the little sling backpack over my shoulder. I can't help but notice that you didn't touch your tea. Did I make it bad? Uh... It's fucking ice cold by now. Oh, right, I jizzed in it. I forgot that I jizzed in it. Apparently, you also forgot that I jizzed in it. Or did you? Oh, I didn't. <laughs> I actually, oh, I didn't. actually, actually, looking looking at the colors of the different drinks, I think you jizzed in yours, but it's, not mine. It's true. It's funny because the game calls that a coffee cup, but it's most very obviously, like, not a coffee cup. I mean, I don't, I, you drink coffee out of mugs. That, that's, Mug. a, that's a teacup with a fucking saucer. Who the fuck is drinking coffee out of a teacup with a saucer? I don't know why the game calls it a fucking teacup. Uh, I think it's more common outside of America. I think, I think, I think maybe, yeah. So, yeah. there, there's something that's kind of interesting, is that um, Animal Crossing historically used to try to sort of remove things that made it Japanese. Mm -hmm. um, and I think still does, but I noticed in this game they did a lot less of that. There's actually a weird term for it it's called cultural odor when there are bits of culture that are sort of weird that like you'll notice right like oh this this seems kind of japanese mm -hmm. but a japanese person is just like oh this is just a thing a normal thing that we see it. every that we see every day type of a thing yeah right you know what yeah. and then um localizers will sometimes try to remove that cultural odor you're dead fucking on when you say that um they went out of their way. You'd feel well, not go out. They, they, they didn't do that at all this time. You know, if Nintendo they, themselves, I, I was happy about that. They like they sort of didn't worry about removing it as much for this game. No, not at all. I mean, I've got like, hold on, where the fuck? Um, where is it? I got these kimono stands. The, the game just, I don't know. My my Joy-Con is like dead. I guess it's not working. I don't. All right, never mind. I was gonna look at some of the things, but my Joy-Con don't don't work. I, I don't, oh, what GG. the fuck? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, dude, like like fucking the kimono stands and like some of the like like calligraphy stuff. Like I have this calligraphy thing on the wall in the other room. Um, mm -hmm. those flower stands that are outside. If you saw them in like my my town square, there's like those flower uh, floral arrangement things. Mm -hmm. 
that look very, um... That, you know, I knew they were Japanese because a couple of weeks before I had seen them in Katamari Damacy. And I, when I saw it in the game, I was like, chat, look, it's the, 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 those things from Katamari Damacy. In fact, when I rolled it up into my Damacy ball, I believe I said out loud, but I don't know what, it's some kind of weird Japanese thing. I don't know what it is, but I'm, but I'm, but I'm rolling it up. Um, tons of shit. Yeah, that definitely was not in previous Animal Crossing games, which is just, which is just like... Yeah, this is just stuff that uh, we have going on in Japan. Uh, and yeah, and in localization for animes, right? That That's how we ended up with, like, oh, Brock, those are not donuts, dude. I sure do love a jelly donut. It's, it's like, that, that it's Brock... like, that's... I've never seen a jelly donut like that. But Brock has just no idea what a jelly donut even is. Um, he had a stroke. <laughs> But yes, yeah, that, that was like the one effect. That was the one lingering effect of the stroke. He made a full recovery, except now he always calls rice balls jelly donuts. Also, his eyes don't open. Oh, that was the other effect. He's just walking around with his eyes closed constantly for some reason. No, he, he can clearly like still see. I don't know. Maybe he learned echolocation. <laughs> like, look, I yeah, got maybe this. that's why he can like navigate the caves. He doesn't need flash to navigate the caves. He just goes. Ah! Every so often. And just lets the sound bounce off the walls to tell him where he is. Yeah. Uh-huh. I've got the low screen, ah! these the, just... these screens. <laughs> could you could you imagine walking through the caves and you're like, oh, it's so dark in here, I can't see. And you just hear, ah! So what you're saying is Brock like, is basically a what fucking was... Zubat. What was that? Ah! <laughs> Brock, you okay? What happened? You stubbed your toe on something? Ah! <laughs> Uh, yeah, they got squatty potties. Well, squat toilets, which is a big, you know, that's a, that's an Asian uh, thing, squat toilets. Oh, lobster, you're right. L like the fake toff, right. I love, oh, that was an amazing filler episode. Have you ever seen Last Airbender? I just actually watched through the entire thing. Isn't it so good? Since they put it on Netflix. You know, I did. I have it I on Blu-ray. I did enjoy it. Yeah, I did. I enjoyed it quite a bit, actually. Yeah, it was, it was cool. Oh, yeah. I adore it. Um, I love it so so much. Yeah, I, I just how is it that like five people die over the course of the entire anime though? Is it you, that that was the thing that pissed my chat off because they were like you're wrong and you're an idiot. The entire fucking anime has all these huge battles and like tons of people are just fucking lobbing fire and, and shit at each other and it's a it's a full on fucking war between these two countries and like two people died the entire time. I that? took it to mean that, like, a lot of the people in those armies died. But you just like, didn't see it because it's Nickelodeon? I, I guess. And it's a kid's show? That was my, yeah. that was my thought. I like, know the uh, entire Air Nation dies, but that takes place before the events of the show, okay? That was my... I said that that day, okay? Mm -hmm. And no, Jet didn't actually die, Torrent. And I believe in one of the, in the episode where they go to the play that's based on them... They even uh, they make a, a self-aware joke about the fact that nobody knows what happened to Jet. <laughs> Remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see, you see the skeleton. There's like the two. Area. There's like two skeletons for like two seconds in the first episode. That's it. I couldn't. Yeah, Twitchy. I I couldn't get into Korra. Like, <laughs> I really. The first season was really cool. I think. I, I think that there were a lot of things about the lore that I just really didn't like that they did with it. There are a lot of things that bothered me about it that just that was the spinoff right with me. The spinoff yeah, or the that, sequel? That was the spinoff. It was like a long after sequel. Takes place but after, like, yeah. No, it was like weird. Like the the setting didn't sit well with me. Not worth checking out, you think? I here's the problem, right? Season one has the coolest goddamn villain. But then he is defeated in the first season, and I feel like all the impetus that the show had just sort of fizzled. Mm. Did anyone else in chat feel that way? I just couldn't keep watching after that. I, I didn't, I didn't have the motivation to keep watching. It was only supposed to have one season. Wow, that makes way more sense. Because that first season was good. It was nice. And, if you watch Korra, Mike, watch the first season. Well, I think and I, that's it. All right. Watch the first season. I think the next thing I'm going to watch is fucking SpongeBob. Oh boy. You know I've I just never really watched SpongeBob. Neither did I. 
Speng- Spengelbert. Spengelbert Spengelbert Um Let's uh let's wrap it up here, man. Thank you for coming yeah. again. And Chad, thank no, you I, for, I for watching. This. Um Oh thank you. Thank you, Fred. Not Frank. Fred, not Frank. His name's not not Frank. His name's not Frank. I have to just uh, I have to drill that in there. Uh, it's going to become a problem where now I keep accidentally calling you Frank. It's like the koala cant thing. Like I started s- pronouncing coelacant as koala cant to be a dick, and now I can't stop. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you for for bringing this uh, the story into our lives. This was uh, it's a good time, man. Thank you so much. I I loved it. I th- thank you so much for letting me share it with you. It was you. very fun to read to read through it with you. Um, guys, thank you for watching tonight. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if anybody uh, is new to the channel, you can find me on social media and YouTube. The links will be in the chat. You can also find Fred Knudsen uh, on uh, social media, camera. social media and YouTube. Uh, there's going to be links for that as well. I think there's a command for that. Vinehart, I don't, I don't know. Uh, she'll, she'll, Cryptid's got it. Thank you, Cryptid. Um, and thank you guys for uh, your subs, your resubs, and your bits. There was all those bits from Skele Chicken. Thank you for that, Skele Chicken. Uh, also, um, I know there were a lot of subs and resubs tonight that I didn't call out because, again, we were reading a thing, and I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to talk over Fred and, and and all that. But guys, if you sub oh, tonight, know that up. I that I really do appreciate it. What's up? What do you got? Look at chat. Oh, just I was I was looking at our Discord uh, chat. Oh no! Feel back to the family, Frank. Uh, movie night with Fred for the SpongeBob movie. Mm, th- maybe Ploptypus. D- hey, Fred, you, you you got anything like Wolf Tracer? Uh, any you got any you got anything like that? We could we could watch one night. Oh yeah, man, yeah. we've watched Rhapsody Street Kids. We've watched. Yeah, we did a double Dinosaur feature. Island. Yeah. We've watched um, the Maradonia movie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me think. Yeah, any yeah, yeah, other shit? I'm we sure watch. that I'm sure that there are tons. Um. Yeah, I still to have to put the, I... the the dinosaur from that uh, dinosaur movie as an emote. I have to. I... <laughs> it's, it's good. It exists. Somebody made it. I just have to swap out one of the other ones. A talking cat. What's a talking cat? Is that the name of the movie? That could be something to dig into at a future juncture. A talking cat. Oh my god, I just thought of something. Um, I don't... What's it, what's it called? Um, Do you want it to be a surprise? Uh, I... I want to see. Uh, I I don't know if you'd be able to handle it. It's like fifty minutes. It's. Uh. Damn it! What's it called? Um, it, it's the one with like the really creepy, like poorly animated faces, of like the people singing Bible songs. I haven't heard of it. Hold on, I can... Maybe I can find it. Hold on. Is is this VeggieTales? No, it's not. Uh... Listen to Frank Sparkle. Listen to it. Look, he's like a fleshy wind chime. Damn it. I think I'm gonna leave this room like this, chat. I don't think I don't think I'm gonna put the, the the shit back the way it was. I'm just gonna leave this like this for for you know future streams. Dorbies. Wait, Do- no, no, no. It's not Dorbies. It can't be. Dorbies. Is it? Hold on. I know what you guys are talking about, and that's not what I'm thinking of. That's creepy too, but it's, it's something different. Hold on. Dorbies is creepy. Um. I, I'm going to look at chat to see if someone called it out. It's not Dorby's. What's? It's like they they cut out the two people's faces, and then put them through an animation program. Oh, that sounds like but, nightmare fuel. 
it's i don't think we could watch it for an entire thing it's 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 a 50 minute long thing why not it's like it it, it gets pretty repetitive after a while um i don't think that would be worth an entire watch um it's not Dorby's, guys. It's... Dorby's. It's... That sounds worth investigating. Oh, come on. I need to think. I don't think it's... No, it's not Joshua and the Promised Land. It's like an album. It wasn't 3D. No, it was 2D. They just took a photo. Hold on. I'm going to... No, nah, Colobald, you didn't miss art. Fred, I'm going to look at art while you investigate this, okay? Okay, go ahead. It's not it's not 3D animated. It's photographs that were cut out, put into a shitty animation program, and then um, it interpreted them speaking, and then made their mouths move. But it was really, really uncanny. Sounds like some face rig shit. Hold on. You know what? Found it! You did find it? Found it! Albino Octopus uh, says that's a difficult thing to do to Google. Yeah, but you're talking about Fred here. Fred motherfucking Knudsen. Got it. Master, go. Go Master Googler. It's called Jan and Phil Enlow Just for Kids CD Animated by Rosalie <laughs> Graziano. Uh, I, I, like I, I, can't, I can't even look at that. I, th that right. is one of the most horrifying things I've ever seen in my fucking life. Can, can, can we just watch a little bit of it? Right now? Just, yeah, right now. Because I don't think I don't think that we could watch the entire 30 minutes. It really is just... That is hard. Not great. No, that's fucked up, dude. Dude, y you gotta. Oh. Now, now chat's demanding it. Okay, just give me a minute to get it set up. Oh. This woman's channel is completely filled with her, like, repairing and making animatronics, too. She's live! On, on YouTube She's streaming. Right, right now? She's streaming. She also has been trying to make a movie. Oh, no. She's also done creepy animation. Creepy 3D animation. I'm gonna, um... She sang for it. I'm going to make a display capture so you guys can see this, but th this is like, guys, I'm warning you right now. This is, <sighs> this is fucking, this, this is scary. I'm amazed that this hasn't gone viral. It only has 58,000 views. That's maddening to me because I feel like this should be way more popular. The following video is rated C for cute. I already knew this was a rabbit hole, by the way. What the fuck? Am j jest for kids? Jest for kids. It's just Jesus songs. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> this has the energy of that um the Jack Stauber shit. You know the Jack Stauber? It, it kind of does. Because yes. it's got the I, old I the it. old VHS crust on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when was this? This was 2012. Where the <laughs> fuck do you find this shit? <laughs> Where did you find this? How do you know about this? Why do you know about this? I don't remember. This thing triggers my fucking fight or flight response, dude. It should. Like, I'm having a fucking existential crisis looking at this right now. Helix thing says everyone in this chat is going to die in seven days now. Y you fucking you cursed <laughs> us. That's why it's not, uh, that's why it hasn't gone viral. Is people won't watch it over and over. This is a personal fucking affront. <laughs> uh, you're welcome to skip around in it, by the way. You fucking killed all of us. You actually, this is this is a a ring type situation. Like you watch the video and you get seven days to live. That this is very SCP, isn't it? Yeah. This this feels. Uh, th this this is too disturbing to not be ironic. I might actually use this in my SCP campaign. 
script oh for my. like an essay. That would be really fun to make my like like a real life thing, really like a, like, of, like a little like, like making a little like ARG like ARG type of a fucking thing, but that uses like real world shit. Yeah, a little bit. Oh, that's a fucking cool idea. Like just oh yeah, this thing by the way is an SCP. Yeah, you guys aren't even seeing the Photoshop cutouts yet. At, at at any point, did they think to themselves that this was going to be not... Like, that kid might not like this? This person, as I recall, has some sort of mental illness that made this. Oh. Um, yeah. She, I, I don't know what she has. Um, Hold on. You know what? Let me Let me see. No. What is this? Uh, no. Well, uh, a cognitive. Okay, she has a cognitive disability. A cognitive um, disability. Mm. Yeah. Hold on. Let me. Oh, you know what it is? Look. Her brain doesn't have the ability to recognize fear. Like she doesn't understand <laughs> fear. <laughs> she just doesn't. Okay, hold on. That uh, really is a G name... mod. Holy shit, Turbo Tales. He. This is a G mod character. Here we go. Um, an article about her. Rosalie Graziano, a self-taught artist in Brevard County who paints, makes puppets, and creates animation. Uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, with a cognitive disability. Uh, it's prosopagnosia? Cake, is it prosopagnosia? Oh my god, what the fuck? Hmm. Look at that it's, smile. It, it's not specifying. <laughs> it's not, it's not specifying. <sighs> oh. All right. Anyways, continue. On the pressure, don't give in to a pest. God has chosen you to be your best. Be your best. Oh. You gotta say no. Oh. Best. That is the fucking face of Satan. Just warm your lips like this and let it go. This this screen cap with her. Oh. Are you seeing it? Yeah. That it, you can take a screen cap of it with the no over her face. This is a legitimately cursed image. It's a nice, maybe maybe a nice reaction image. No, it's that's insanely cursed. It's not even a reaction image. It's something beyond that. It's it's transcended a uh, reaction image. Why are there bubbles? You gotta say no. No. I, I, they're trying I, I, to get me to stop watching this. What the fuck kind of animation is this? With y using a, a photograph and then and then animating it? What 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 the? It's it's just, it's just using Photoshop to kind of like, uh, warp uh, warp so, the photos. So there, it looks like not Photoshop. For a, uh, for a long time, there have been animation programs that are like basically designed to make animation really cheap. And easy. Yeah. Um, and they, um, you basically just set parameters. Like you say, here's the mouth, here are the eyes, and it adds them in, right? It, and it animates them, and it, it approximates what the mouth should look like and animates it. It's very low effort animation software. Extremely low right. effort, yes. Jesus. Man, you should probably be using it with, like, I, I don't know, drawings and not puppets and... Oh my dear god, look at this. Yeah, you see those tran... You see those transitions, right? Those are baked into the program. Like, I could, I could probably animate this in Adobe Premiere by just using, like, the warp or, uh, or skew, uh, fucking tools. You know what I mean? Saying that I could do it means that it's, it takes, it, yeah, it's like z zero talent, negative talent. It's... She looked at this and said, and said, oh. yeah, th this is, this is a, oh. a trend with anything that Christians make. It's always like, you, you would, th okay, so back in the day in the, the Renaissance, right? These people made art for God, and it's like, if I'm going to make art for God, then it has to be the best thing I've ever made. But nowadays, it's like the opposite. For <laughs> anyone making Christian art is like low effort, by the numbers, Why did he jiggle? boring bullshit. Did you see him jiggle? 
<laughs> oh god, yes. Look at the Jenga! Oh, oh my god, look! What is that? <laughs> he just like gyrates his head in a circle. Oh, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. And look at look at the arm like expanding over here for no reason. Oh, this is so it's expand cursed. arm. All right, I've seen her. Oh, there's oh there's some daddy over here. Daddy. Oh yeah, because because God is daddy. That's a very infantile sort of approach to the Bible. I didn't even like those people when I was practicing. This is evil. I thought they were weird and creepy. Th this is... This is, um... Y yeah, you, you stumbled into, like, a sect of, of, of fuck. This is some kind of cult. That they, I don't even think that they're they're Christian. I, I think no, that's a dude, cover for, you, for some kind of satanic... You've clearly, you've clearly right. never been to a Baptist church. This can't be... No, this can't be endorsed by, by, by anybody who calls himself a Christian. I, 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 don't, I don't think... I just can't. No, I haven't been to a Baptist church, but this is this is the kind of shit that flies over there. This is the kind of shit that's that's acceptable. Oh, the low effort, like you know, a a woman who decides she's she's going to get into creative stuff, and so like does like paper cutouts and glues them on paper, like she's in elementary school, and then is like, I made this to, and then it's like something Bible related, but like only surface level. That sort of shit is everywhere in Protestant Christianity. It's kitsch, like, kitschy anyone who's a Christian, bullshit. Anyone yeah. in chat right now who is a Christian, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, I know that you know what I'm talking look about. Look at this creepy those, those, fuck like, just moseying onto the screen with, like, only... It, it, look at <laughs> half of his body is gone. You can, see the, you can see the crop at the bottom of his body. You see, you see it? I know, right? Yeah. Oh it's, my it's God! Clear. He's it's just a disembodied really fucking like, head. Like you can see the crease where the photograph they used was folded. Was folded. <laughs> yeah, the fucking disciples of the Yellow King are behind this. Now this is extra cursed, but the energy is similar to what a lot of more Protestant benign Christians would see. Right? Things that you've seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Where it's like, ha ha ha, cool, Janice. Ha ha, cool. Thanks. We, well, no, nobody's yeah. ever going to question your love of Jesus ever again. Now, now, now get that the fuck out of here. Bring that, bring that back home. <laughs> cool, now get it out of here. Yeah, part of it is all oh, the eyes. I love it when, like, he does the face blink. being animated is, like, changing when both of them are in the show. Oh, the ye. Oh, yeah, show this to your fucking kids. Uh, what are her eyes? Look at her eyes. Oh, I just realized all the comments are gone because it's on YouTube Kids. Oh, that's no, a that's a fucking shame. So Why? Here, look. There's a nice screen cap for you guys. Why? <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> oh, this is rated C for cute. I could use this for my campaigns. C for curse. Legitimately. C for cute. Oh my god. Is that the, the the fucking classical piece played very badly? Are you hearing that? God has entrusted It's chopsticks. It's chopsticks. I was gonna I was gonna say that, yeah, but I wasn't sure and I didn't want to look wrong, but I should have just went for it because it's totally called chopsticks. Oh my god, but did you hear how badly it was played? Yeah, it's uh, they obviously produce this themselves. D dude, it's it's so huh! it's so dissonant and it's obviously so cursed. obviously like the chords are not the right chords. Not sticks, curmudgeon bees, yeah. <laughs> it's not sticks. I, I'm I, I'm trying to listen to the stream, but we're talking. I'm just gonna listen to it on my own. Like forty, so twenty-eight minutes in, like twenty-eight eighteen. Go to yeah, go exactly there. Piano. They fuck it up. They fucked it up so bad. 
And then they put a beat on it. And then they they made it into a Jesus song. How do you fuck up chopsticks? Is it like is it isn't like that the first thing that you learn when you're being taught piano? Because it's just like you're supposed to only use two fingers when you play that. Is, are, right. is, isn't that am I am I right? Like where it's just that right. those chords are it's a chord progression where it's only two note chords. So you're just supposed right. to move like the, it, it's to teach you like finger positioning. Or like how to you know, it's like like keep your fingers in the same place as you go from chord to chord. It's got to be like one of the easiest things to 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 play correctly. I I I think I think part and they of fucked it, it up. is the but why mommy like like that shrill child's voice it, asking why mommy and then the cursed. awful chopsticks being played is like like just start hold on uh start it at. Uh, 28-15. He's got fucking joint- he's got joints in- in his fucking, like, upper skull that enable it to move that way. Mm -hmm. Oh. I guess it's- maybe it, it's- it's not played correctly because it's supposed to be a kid, like, practicing le learning how to play piano. It doesn't change how cursed it is. It just makes it worse. What the fuck is that? I believe what that the, she's what a the nice fuck person. is that? What the fuck is that? Excuse me! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I don't know if she's just bad at the program or if the program is horrific. I think it's just the program. <laughs> That's one of the lion men. <laughs> what was that sound of it? <laughs> Did it neigh? I think so. I think so. Mike, she made a bit. Listen, Fred. Th this might be another stream, dude. Where where we watch a whole stream? Where we just watch the, all of the videos on this channel. There are a lot. She's been uploading very recently. Fred, it's, Fred, we the, might... The, the thing is, the, he, here's the thing, right? I feel like this person has some sort of mental disability who made it. We've confirmed that. <sighs> like, going through her whole channel feels, like, not good. If it, feel, it feels like I'm making fun of a person with mental illness. Okay, when you put it that way, that absolutely makes sense, and I agree, who, like, and I agree with who you. Who means okay. well. Okay. It legitimately when you, means well. when you when you put it this that way, like, that makes sense. Fine. Yeah. True. Okay. I am willing to watch any of these like on their own for their own entertainment value, but watching it on God damn it, I'm sorry. I guess I'm I guess I'm leaving the town. Yeah. Well, you're um, we're, we're trying to end anyway. Okay. So. Yeah. It, it all works. Um. I, it went to sleep. I forgot. Um. But, like, if, if us two together were just to go through the whole channel, that, that'd be fine. But on stream, it feels like mocking a mentally ill person. Uh, what if, um, what if we just, like, left her out of it and just, and, and just looked at these videos? Uh, the animation, I, And just, again, like, looked I, at, I, I, I and just, know. and just looked at it for, like, what it is. Like, just the thing itself. Maybe. Maybe. I'd have to think about it. Well, I'm not sure how I feel about it on, uh, personally. Why indeed? Why indeed? Why indeed? Can you please look at the description of the video? Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I was going to point that out earlier. Um, the, all right. Go actually show. Yeah, show it on stream because it's the syntax is weird. Uh, okay. Um... We have the program name. I forgot. She gives the program name. All right. No, I'm not going to uh, put it in screen capture for a variety of reasons, but it says oh, this yeah. this is a gift I made for my friends Jan and Phil no, and No, no, no. no. It, it goes into caps partway through. Okay. This is a gift I made for my friends Jan and Phil and Lo. This is one of their T H E R fun CDs just for kids and kids alike. Like me, I loved this CD so much, I brought it alive with crazy. With crazy with, what? Oh, 
Crazy Talk 5 Pro. Show, uh, click on Show More. You're not right. seeing the whole thing. Crazy Talk 5 Pro. They gave me permission to use their songs so it could be shared to tell everybody the good news. Jesus loves them. Okay. Well, there you go. Uh, I'm feeling, I, I wanna, I'm feeling hold loved. On. Uh, hold on. Crazy Talk 5 Pro. I want to see if anyone has done anything with it. Uh, Ten years ago. Here we go. Crazy Talk 5 oh, Pro. Oh, it's, it's the program. Are you saying that, like, I could have access to Crazy Talk 5 Pro, theoretically? Uh, theoretically. Just kind of... Uh, tutorial, tutorial, uh, face fitting. What the fuck is this? Are you sure it's a good idea for me to have access to, to, to Crazy Talk 5 no. Pro? You sure, sure it's a good idea? Oh my god. Mike, please put this on stream. I've only seen a couple seconds, but I want to watch it with you. All right. Hold on a second. <laughs> Look at that thumbnail. Oh, 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 oh my god. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> well, let, let's hit play together. All right. Hold on. Okay. All right. Three, two, one, play. Christmas. I want to wish me a Merry Christmas in a Happy New Year. A Happy oh. New Year. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I see everybody out there, out there watching me. No, oh, I didn't know you were here, though. You know, He's I blinking. just think you all caught me by he, 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 he. Why are his I eyes sideways? Everybody here this year, <laughs> I want know. to have a little complaint with you, <gasps> with a everybody, complaint. with all you peoples. Because I am the Mr. Christmas tree. <laughs> Every year, what? you people put up the Christmas tree in the house. You decorate it all pretty and everything like that. Then all of a sudden, you take us and you throw us out of the curb. And you put <laughs> us in the, the fireplace. <laughs> you know, I have lost many cousins because they <laughs> become a Christmas tree in somebody's home. What the fuck is, what is the point of this? I think I've seen enough. I, I'm looking at this person's channel and the second most recent video from four years ago is My Fart Piano. I'm concerned. Rejected Twin Peaks shit, R. Gibbs says, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is like the official web, uh, YouTube channel of Crazy Talk 5? Uh, no. No, it's not. Uh, it's just a random person's channel who made a thing with Crazy Talk 5. God damn Is it. Is there more uncanny animation here, though? <sighs> uh, no. Ins He's complaining be because, like, we, you, we, because if we have Christmas trees. Like, he doesn't like, he is a Christmas tree. I don't, I don't get, I don't get it. Okay. Fred, I have to I have to wrap the stream up though. Uh, yeah, we're um, we're going down a rabbit hole right now. We that's what I'm saying. We could we could do this whole rabbit hole like another another night if you want. You come back and check it out another I will this uh Bubba Fair, thank you. Uh we could check all this shit out another night if you want. Um like some future uh future content, if you will. Um but 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 why, mommy? But why? Uh, I'm gonna check out the art at this point. Again, if anybody made art for the stream tonight, you can tweet it at me with the hashtag Jabroni Mark. Jabro Jabroni, Jabroni Mark. Are, are we Frank and Mark? Frank and Mark. Yeah, you know what? That sounds good. Frank and Mark, the OTP. <laughs> Frank, and Frank X Mark. All right. <laughs> hashtag Jabroni Mike Art. Is where you want to send the art. You also want to tweet it at me and use the hashtag, okay? This is from Cola Bowl that says, I like to imagine Moisty carries around a massive needle for some reason. W why, though? Because You know why? I think because you're mentally associating Moisty with that character from Hyperdimension Neptunia who does that for some reason. Don't, a thing. don't do that. Yeah, that's a fucking thing, unfortunately. Uh, oh, we got some art from... Lobster on the loose. It's J5th. 
It says some art of the character Henderson from tonight's stream. Oh my God! Yes. Uh, and there he is. I I guess I don't know. He's got the mohawk, uh, <laughs> and he's got some kind of symbol on his forehead. He, he's got. I, I I think that's chaos from 40k. Is it okay? Yeah, that's a symbol for because chaos. that because that's what he is. That's a good a good good tattoo for him to have, I guess. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a reward poster for the gnome. Very very the nice. Gnome. Very nice and lobster on weed. those. Um, and the the reward is, is weed. Uh, I have another piece here. I think you're gonna I think you're gonna like it, Fred. Uh, it's from Primal Screen Guy. It says, "I'd love to see more high quality talk shows be between these two intellectual men." See, right, I could I could actually see a podcast having this as I, I don't know. It, it has that sort of hipster vibe to it. The Hanna, I mean? the Hanna Barbera art, Hanna Barbera yeah, yeah, style yeah, yeah. art. That's what they. I, I, yeah. I could totally see um, a podcast aping the style for like their art. Yeah, it would work. Um, and also, um, from somebody, like, this looks legit. This is what I'm saying. It actually looks legit. Their art's always legit. Thank you so much, Primal Screen Guy. Um, thank you so much. Uh, and maybe, uh, maybe that, maybe we use that for the the thumbnail, uh, for the YouTube upload. Since it's so cool. Oh, uh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, this piece is from... Hold on a sec. Uh, it's from Piss T, a.k.a. Peach T Dreams. And it's you. And you look really, 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 really motherfucking adorable. Aww. It says... Hell. What the fuck am I... Mike and Fred reading this chaotic journey, and you're like, what the fuck am I reading? It just says hell. Okay. Very cute. Very, very, Aww, very, very, you. very, very insanely, insanely, like, like, so cute, it makes me want to just, like, smash my fucking forehead into my monitor. <laughs> um, Aww. what else? Uh, from, oh, this is fucking cool, Fred. You're gonna like this. This is from Jazz Gen. It says, I heard Mike finally watched Avatar The Last Airbender, so I drew him as a firebender. And hopefully we'll get Earthbender art done soon, Oh, that's too. fucking great. Yeah, see, I always figured I would be a cumbender, but let's not go there again. Uh, and finally, from Space Vermin on Twitter. You uh, would be a firebender. It said, you think so? You think so? Yeah, you would, you would totally be a firebender. I have firebender energy? You do. Uh, yep. It's just, you know, I'd say it's just, I'm just kind of like a fucking like, crazy unhinged arsonist, much like our hero, Old Man <laughs> Henderson. Uh, this is from Space Vermin. It says, uh, Twitch name, the Cake 64 I drew Mike and Fred as Animal Crossing villagers. Mike's design is inspired by the drawing Roscoe did of my, yeah, my raccoon, uh, raccoon trash sona. Oh uh, my god, I love these. Oh my goodness. I have a gamer I shirt on. Them. And I have socks and sandals on. <laughs> Why do I have socks and sandals? <laughs> Fuck you, god damn it. Um, uh, alright. Well... This has been really cool and fun, but it's that time of the night where my back is screaming in agony, so I do have to go uh, fucking lay down. Uh, this was just, uh, this was such a fucking ride. Thank you, Fred, for bringing this, this all, all of this cursed shit, because this was a two for tonight. Like, we didn't just get the, um, the story of Old Man Henderson. Uh, we also got that really just fucking uh, god-awful YouTube channel as well, so thank we you. We got... We got Jan and Phil Enlo Just for Kids CD animated by Rosalie Graziano. WMV. Dear, dear God, what a mouthful. Okay, so guys, thank you again for watching. Love you all so much. Uh, I may not be streaming tomorrow night, but I think what's going to happen is, and I know I said I was going to stream last night, but I just I didn't I didn't get to. Uh, things just worked out in such a way where I didn't get to, and I apologize for that. So I'm going to get to that Shantae game uh, next week at some point. I think Sunday night, I'm probably going to get back to Sonic Adventure 2 uh, and oh, resume shit. that How are you liking journey. That? You, know, you know, it's 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 uh, it's a flawed game, but I'm having a lot of fun with it. It definitely didn't age well. Mm -mm, mm, nope, nope. Now, hey, it aged better than Sonic Adventure 1. I'll tell you that. Ah. Uh, and it's a very fun game to stream as well. And also, if anybody's got any extra funds... Laying around, don't forget that we're raising money for the Trevor Project this month, uh, Pride Month. Okay. No, today's Friday, Queen right. of Waffles. Surprise! 
Saturday's tomorrow. Nice surprise, right? You're welcome. All right. So that's it for me. Out of words. Fred, thank you again for hanging out. I, I had a great time. Thanks Good. for I'm glad. this with me. Uh, my pleasure, man. I had a blast. And have a great night, guys. Lots of love. Bye.